Hello, everybody. What is what is up? I didn't see you there. Uh, I'm just a guy with a new keyboard that wants to do some coding. Oh God. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably copyright. Audio jungle. <laughs> okay, let's make an announcement. <laughs> oh, that's too much fun. That's too much fun. Okay, make an announcement. Okay, it's been too long, everybody, because I forgot how to make an announcement. Okay, uh, that next stream. Oh, God, I can't type. That is about. Oh, yep, this will this will be what this stream is like. That thing. <laughs> we are on twitch.tv slash lens underscore r. Got to remember how to type. And uh, yeah, that that looks good to me. We'll put a red circle. I always uh, do that when I'm live. Got to got to keep up appearances here. What did I just press? Again, this will be common. I'm gonna resort to the mouse. It's good enough for me. Probably should have put a, a pipe there, but it doesn't matter. We lay pipe wherever we may. Ooh. <laughs> We're like Charlie and Glenn. Uh, I can't remember his name, Mac. I almost called him Rob, because that's his name in real life. Charlie and Mac looking at each other across the restaurant. <laughs> I gotta go say hi. <laughs> Terrific table. Fifty-five says hi. What's up, Terrific Table? You've been in the uh, you've been in the in the Discord. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> the Terrific Table fifty-five of the Discord <laughs> has shown up. Everybody, how's it going, Terrific Table? How's it going? Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna make a new Emacs. Because I had this open since last night. And you never know what those plugins are doing. Postman says, yo. What's up, Hostman? What's up, Terrific Table 55? I'm the one not able to do basic maths. <laughs> I mean, that's why I use a computer to do it for me. <laughs> Sarade says, yup. What's up, Sarade? What's up? Sarade says, I'm opening the PR right now. Oh, that's glorious. That's glorious. For those of you that don't know, here. Probably should do this. A uh, new keyboard. Whoa, still did it. Uh, Sir 8 has been working tirelessly <laughs> on Lenser OS. <laughs> I've been doing so much work, as you can see. And uh, Sir 8 has also been doing a lot of work. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see, though. It's so good to see. I love that Lenser OS is getting some love again. <laughs> Lander XD says Lens is live and Lander is the here. <laughs> Lens is the live and Lander is the here. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, Sir Aid, does it still have problems with like 60 gigabytes of memory? <laughs> or did we fix that? When was that fixed? <laughs> <laughs> Sir Aid says, err. Uh oh. <laughs> I think that's a Clang debug. Okay, we're good. I just won't run Clang D. I'll make sure to shut down my language server in Emacs. <laughs> Lander XT says, don't ask. Okay. It's probably a meme. I'm just a boomer. So it says, it's just in format. Nice. Yeah. So, don't open. Be. I'm just scared that having Emacs will index all of the uh, files. But yeah. He's been working tirelessly on creating a C++ library <laughs> from scratch. And uh, it's pretty dope. I would really recommend it. And the reason we're writing this is so that it's easier to write a libc for our user space in Linzer OS. <laughs> so we need a C++ standard library to be able to... To be able to make the standard C library, which I mean, it just makes sense if you think about it. You know what I mean? Because C, C plus plus came first, obviously. <laughs> this is looking good. Uh, 
This is looking really good. Very nice. I can't wait to actually make it not just a static one megabyte heat. <laughs> I think we have a memory map that's suitable for Malik at this point. I just would have to go in and probably use it because I made it. <laughs> Lander XT says, so you're writing a libc++ to downgrade to a libc. Well, that's the thing. We're going to compile this standard C++ with that libc. So it's kind of a, a bootstrapping nightmare, you know what I mean? When it comes to the Lenser OS tool chain. So if the C++ lib uses the standard C library at all, it means that it's, it's going to be a bad time. But the C++ standard library doesn't. So our C++ library is our lowest level. <laughs> then we move up to a C library. That way all our user space programs will have a good base. <laughs> It just sounds so funny. Even describing it, I sound like I'm describing a pyramid scheme. Like, no, it's an upside-down funnel system. You don't get it. <laughs> oh, man. Lando XD says, this is why I'll never work on an OS. <laughs> it's not too bad, man. It's not too bad. Sorry, it says upside-down funnel. Lamau. <laughs> it's true. It's, uh, yeah. Basically... You recruit people, and they become your boss. <laughs> but the money always goes down, down the funnel. So if it's an upside-down funnel, <laughs> all the money goes to the top. Don't think about it too hard, okay? Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway... <laughs> That's that's what we're working on, and I'm pretty sure sorry it's gonna open a PR, and we're gonna be able to look at all. Oh yeah, <laughs> I O. <laughs> what a PR, by the way. What a champ. Fifteen commits in six seconds. That's how long it took him. That's what that means. Fifteen commits in six seconds. Oh no, uh, seven seconds. That's he had to make the comment. So this comment took one second, and then he committed all of this in six seconds. That's pretty good. I like that. That's fast. You're fast, sir. I can't believe you implemented all of IO in six seconds. <laughs> I'm in a mood today, man. <laughs> it took a week. <laughs> oh, I'm so ridiculous. Ugh. Is sir some sort of hoop? <laughs> I can't. Scratch that. Scratch that. <laughs> Reverse. Is Serade some sort of superhuman AI? <laughs> I can't read, man. I cannot read. <laughs> 3,100 lines added. 700 deleted, apparently. Ooh, <laughs> that's nice. Serade says, perhaps, <laughs> in response to is he some sort of superhuman AI. I can't even read, man. Hooper human. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Terrific Table 55 says he is GitHub Copilot. <laughs> oh, nice. He added this back. We got that Mickey D's <laughs> back in action. Is there an extra space here? Is that a tab? Oh, it's just commented out. It's fine. It's fine. We have this. <laughs> I always do this. Don't feel bad. I always do this. Lander XT says, scratch that. He's the main GitHub pilot. <laughs> yeah, he's the captain. The first officer is GitHub co-pilot. <laughs> Surrey is the captain. He's flying the ship, man. Nice. Probably bad. I can't speak this morning. I meant to say probably pretty good, and I said probably good. I I should uh <laughs> reevaluate my life choices. Uh, ooh, <laughs> what a change! This is such a C plus plus change. I love it. We can use auto here. So it says your brain is too fast for your mouth. I don't think my brain's moving that fast. <laughs> Maybe the other way around. 
Sarid says, I mean, I do use Copilot, so <laughs> do you actually? Lender XT says, or just get glasses. <laughs> I, what? I wear glasses. I'm wearing them now. Otherwise, I couldn't see my screen. <laughs> this is probably good that we now open uh, standard in, standard out, and standard air. Why can we move file? Where does file come from? Does that move it? So, like, okay, it's probably just, I don't know. Where is this? Show me. Show me, cow! <laughs> I gotta stop falling asleep to It's Always Sunny. <laughs> Sorry, it says, like, two th 233. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, are you sure you're wearing glasses? <laughs> it's like three lines above. See, that's the thing. What's that thing called, like, cognitive blindness? When you're tasked with so much, <laughs> like reading three lines in front of you, you can just become blind to things that you did actually read. <laughs> I think that's called myopia, but okay. <laughs> Isn't that bad vision? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Lander XT. Late Middle English as a verb meaning string documents on a thread or wire to keep them in order. From French filer to string, fill a thread. Both from Latin filum, a thread. You f what's the original word? You asked where the file came from. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm getting schooled, man. <laughs> Land XT says, didn't specify what you meant. So it's from late Middle English. That's good to know. <laughs> it's because we create it here. That's what I was looking for. If we create it here, then it makes sense that we have to move it. Otherwise, it'll be destroyed when we return, and this is owned by the process. The reason why we move file when we open the stream is because we don't need it anymore after that in this function, and there's no need to copy the shared putter a third time at least. Nice. Yeah, it makes sense. That's what I was looking for. I was like, oh, if we create it, then it makes sense that we have to save it here. But if we're, like, past it, we'd have to really think about what we're doing. I just want to make sure it wasn't, like, a parameter or something that we get to track down. Because that makes debugging very interesting when you standard move something in some function somewhere. So it says we don't have to move it. We don't, but it's fine. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If we create it here, it's a good thing. That way, like, this thing lives on. I know it's a shared putter. It's fine. So it says it's a shared putter. It has a ref count. So it won't just, uh, all of this stuff won't just pop out of existence. But it's, uh... It's more efficient. We basically get get away with using this shared putter as one of the probably standard error here. Zero one two. We have a lot of file descriptor updates, which is very good. We have static casts everywhere, which is C plus plus kernel life. Uh, what are we actually doing here? We're just casting FDs. I'm just double checking. Okay. Initialize standard out driver. Hey, look, that's much nicer. <laughs> Thanks. I like how you made it uh, a member. That's probably a good idea. Because the VFS is basically mainly going to be a standard out driver for a long time. <laughs> We're going to be a, a TUI for a while. Because GUI is... <laughs> Sarahid says... Uh, exactly. And proper shared putters use atomic, so copying them is actually an overhead. Ours don't, but still. <laughs> Who needs atomic atomicity? Who needs atomics? What's you know what I mean? We're all made of atoms anyway. <laughs> you know, man. Oh God, I hit buttons on my mouse. You get a new keyboard, you hit buttons on your mouse. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it sounded good. We redefined. Did we move no and delete? Oh, is this me? Where did I just go? What is happening? 
My is my internet breaking? <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's breaking. <laughs> I was I was like I can't scroll. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Did I crash? Like the browser? I just <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw this, and then it just disappeared. That was incredible. I didn't hit anything. I'm pretty sure the mic picks up. Okay, where am I? Oh my god. Okay. This is the file nonsense. Oh, it's still very... Okay, there we go. We're up and running now. <laughs> Whew. I don't know what I just did, but don't do that. <laughs> Okie dokie. We have a standard out driver, which is now much uh, nicer rather than all this. Creating a, a fake file, basically, and uh, forcing its driver. We just say, hey, what if you just, you know, made a debug out driver, a standard out driver, and you could just switch it out? It's pretty genius, because eventually we can make this not the debug out driver, but we can make this actually the thing that writes <laughs> to standard out of the proper, uh, to the proper file, basically. Alrighty. Uh, VFS open now becomes an auto because it's either a process or a kernel file descriptor. I'm pretty sure this is a process file descriptor. Oh, we get both, that's why. We get a file descriptor, which is actually process and. Yep, sorry, it says it's both because we're in the kernel. Legendary. I like it. Uh, the debug message got updated. That's pretty pog. VFS read process into temp buffer, which is a smart putter. 11. I like that we now have a valid member. That's much better. Because checking for negative one really doesn't catch a lot of errors that you get during development. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's 18 billion. What about that? <laughs> what about when it's uh, five, but there's only three files? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Terrific Table 55 says, I just created a Codeberg account. No, I don't know if I should upload my code to GitHub, my local Git T, or Codeberg. Just do them all. If it's open source, Codeberg requires that it's open source, free and open source. So make sure you license it properly. But just add multiple remotes. I do the same for my text editor. We'll check it out after this. After this. Terrific Table 55 says, is no license an option? That means that you retain all rights to the code, so no. That means nobody can even download it legally. Sorraid says, valid just checks that both aren't negative one, but okay. Listen, I didn't say we implemented it that way. I'm just saying we could. <laughs> it's like, uh, on the surface level, if it looks better, but just say it's better. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Judge books by their covers. That's my advice. <laughs> uh, what do we got? FDs becomes valid. And the debug message updated. Legendary. We have a size T instead of U64. That's a great idea. <coughs> Lander XT says... If you want people to be able to do everything with your code, you can try a public domain dedication like CC0. What would be better if you want them to be able to do everything with your code is the MIT license, or if you want to, them to force them to keep it free and open source, they can't use it for proprietary means, then use the GPL v3. So it says, I just recommend the MIT license. Yeah, let's do it. What is it? Is that it? Here it is. Link. I was faster than Lander this time. That's a, that's a win. That's a win for me. But yeah, copy this into a file called license in the root of your repository. Let's check out Lenser OS. Sorry, it says I use it for pretty much all my projects. I do as well. I use the uh, GPLv3. It's slightly more complicated. 
But basically, there's a license, and uh, you just include it in a license file, and you include who are the copyright holders. Is it anybody that contributes to the repository? Is it you specifically? Is it stuff like that? If you add a file called license via the GitHub web UI, it gives you license templates. Oh, I didn't know that. That's sweet. That's very sweet. But yeah, check this out. We can go check out my other ones as well. We can check out Lite, which is MIT. Fun compiler, which is MIT, or it should be. You can see there's just a, a file called license, and it just has copyright for me. And uh, it just says, permission is hereby granted, free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of the software and associated doc files to deal in the software without restriction, including without limitation, the rights to use, copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sublicense, and or sell copies of the software. And to permit persons to whom the software is furnished to do so, subject to the following conditions. The above copyright notice and this permission notice shall be included in all copies. So as long as this is here, then all of this holds, pretty much. So if you include it with the repo and people clone it or download it, it'll be included and then they have those permissions. Sarade says, I personally can't stand GPLv3, but you do you. Why though? Why is GPLv3 bad? It's completely free and open source and forces free and open source forever. Sarade says, if you had a file called license, oh yeah, I already read that. Terrific table. Yee, it also shows what you and others are allowed to do when you use the license. Am I allowed to write my own license? Are you a lawyer? I don't think it would be legally enforceable unless you are a lawyer and know how to write <laughs> write a license. Terrific Table says no. If you're not trained in writing legal documents, then I would assume that there would just it would be filled with loopholes and it wouldn't be legally enforceable. Because that's why this doesn't read like we talk. <laughs> because a lawyer wrote it very specifically and chose the words on purpose. Does that make sense? So Raid says, I mostly write libraries. I'd like for people to be able to use them. Me as well. I write things and I want people to be able to download it, make their own fork. Like this is a great base for a text editor if you know what you're doing. Just take it. I don't care. I wrote it. I'd love for it to be used. You know what I mean? Same with the compiler. Isn't that MIT? Pretty sure it's MIT. Yep, you can do whatever you want with it. I don't care. I just want people to like... <laughs> My life is not going to be forever. This lives way longer than me. You know what I mean? Which is crazy to think about, but it's true. The C note MIT as well. C note is MIT as well. Faucet BB. Yeah. But yeah, I write a lot of things that are free and open source. And I recommend you do the same. Terrific Table 55 says my license would probably be like mention me, do whatever you want. Yeah, that's not a good license. That's not legally enforceable. That means th it's not good for you. That means someone could say that you're like, they could defame you and you gave them permission to defame you so you can't sue them. And then you could ruin your life and make you like a horrible person in view of your society. It's not going to happen, but I'm just saying it. you're giving people a lot of permission by saying, mention me and do whatever you want. You know what I mean? So if it is legally enforceable, ew, not the greatest thing. Lander XT says license proliferation. This is another reason why not to. Yes. <laughs> Just use an existing one. That way people don't have to keep learning new crap. If, you, if someone sees MIT license, they're like, ooh, I can use it and do whatever I want. Sarade says, also, I don't remember exactly all the details, but there were other reasons why I don't like the GPLv3. Oh, I missed something up above. I'll read it. But I haven't looked at it in a while. I think it was for similar reasons why Linus doesn't use GPLv3 for the kernel, but I'm not sure anymore. You could be right. I don't like GPLv3 because it means people can't use your code for proprietary stuff. That's the idea. Why would Lenser OS ever be allowed to be in a proprietary OS? I don't want people to just put a face on Lenser OS and go, this is my OS. <laughs> That's not okay. And then sell it like, oh, I'd be so mad at them. It's free and open source. That's the point of Lenser OS. So I want to keep it that way. Uh, so it says, uh, that also, that is the exact reason why Linux, Linus uses GPLv2. And 
the reason they don't include the and any further license versions. But I do. So if GPL v4 comes out, in case the laws change and copyright is enforced in a different way, the Free Software Foundation will ensure that the license is updated in a way that keeps software free and open source. So I'm just, I, I like that idea. And also, uh, there's a bunch of lawyers on my side now. <laughs> it's not a big deal, but if I ever get sued, it's a big deal. So it says also, I don't remember exactly, uh, I keep reading the same message. I am in a, I'm in a mood today. Let's keep going through this. We changed to valid. Size T, new malloc and free. Is this in the kernel? What did, what happened? New became no discard. Delete became, why did it change? I don't think that changed, but we now have delete size T. Huh. So it says, I added no discard and they moved down. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> As always, Git is horrible at formatting. You're correct, Sir Aid. And I've added two more at the bottom for placement, new and delete. Interesting. I've never seen these. <laughs> I guess I did have them here. <laughs> I just called them unused. But instead of that, you just called it a size C and called it good, which is way better. So it says, nope. These aren't the same. I guess these aren't no except. That's a big deal. Array new is pointer, then size T. Oh my. I see what you're getting at now. <laughs> That's so confusing. Placement new is size T, then putter. Oh god. What is no except? I don't even remember. I don't honestly know. Just when I was looking up heap stuff, I knew that new and delete, when you override them, they need no accept on delete. So it says no accept means it can't raise an exception. Which I mean is kind of implied when, because we, we, <laughs> the kernel is compiled with f no exceptions, but this, that basically means the compiler doesn't need to admit unwind tables and such. Those scare me. Can we move this? It's in heap. Now we include new in heap.h. So we use the standard C lib. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Terrific table says you can raise exceptions in C and C. Oh man, you <laughs> it's it's only just the beginning for you, I see. Sir Aid says, I think you get a warning, or at least a clang tidy warning, if operator new isn't no accept. Sir Aid says, just C++ actually, but yes. <laughs> you, can, you can raise Python exceptions in C with C Python. It's not the same thing, but you can do it. <laughs> it's, can you imagine importing all of <laughs> C Python? <laughs> just for, to be able to call exceptions. That would be so good. So it says, or operator delete, actually. I think operator new may throw. That's what I think as well. I think operator new can be, can throw. Because malloc can accept. If delete throws, then it's called standard terminate. Yeah, it just says, uh-oh. Bye. <laughs> OS, help. <laughs> and then Lenser OS, the kernel is going to be like, well, we got to clean all this up now. I think we're going to, like, give the user a message whenever there's memory leaks at the end of the program. We're not going to allow it. <laughs> Process equals default. Processes are not copyable. Maybe only in debug mode. Sparse vector is basically a vector that has its own free list, by the way. So basically, every time you allocate new stuff in the vector, and then if you like delete something from the vector, it'll keep that spot, but just add it to a list where it can reallocate into that spot. Does that make sense? 
That way you can erase elements from it without invali without invalidating indices. Exactly. Oh, perfect. Okay. Sweet. Terrific table 55 says, if I want to error, I just exit negative one. I mean, that's what I do as well. <laughs> I use printf and exit negative one in pure C. I'm, I'm that person. Like, does it get here? Does it get here? Sorry, it says depends. Exit calls global destructors, etc. Abort or underscore exit doesn't do that. True. But I mean, then the OS does it. It, ha it happens at one point or another. It's just whether in the kernel or not, right? I think there's meant to be a, a space here behind these. That way it lines up with this. I don't know. We may just have different uh, indenting algorithms in our IDEs. This is VFS forward. So forward declare process descriptors and global descriptors and also an invalid one of those. Okay. And then shorten them. Not too shabby, not too shabby. We should really update to using brackets everywhere, by the way. We, I mean, uh, like here. This should be brackets, angle brackets. So Raid says, yeah, the formatting is a mess right now, Lamau. <laughs> uh, okay, where are we at? Proc FD to FD. Nice, we have this uh, little macro trick so that when you type all caps debug message, if you are if you have debug VFS enabled, this thing right here, then it'll actually call debug message. Otherwise, it'll just do nothing and replace it with a no op, which means you can easily have uh, optional debug messages implanted in the code. Obviously, you still need if defs for more complicated things like iterating, but... Uh, it's not too shabby, I would say. This is much better than having if defs literally all over the place. Here, here, <laughs> uh, here, here, <laughs> right? Terrific Table 55 says, I have a header file I put in like every C++ project that contains functions like error and error and only int, which just print the char pointer input and then exit negative one or the int arg. Nice. You have like your own little API layer you carry around. So it says most of my projects have a utils.hh with error handling, u64, type defs, etc. What is hh? Why? That's so cursed. Why? <laughs> Why hh? I just, I like writing things from scratch and starting with nothing. I use cc for c++ files, hh for headers. That's insanity. <laughs> Because C++ headers does not equal C headers. It's true. Or like a class like this, class print. With like, that calls to printf. You could do that. Dot .cc is very common. Dot .hh is not. I'll give you that. <laughs> dot .cc is very common, but there's dot .cpp just right there. And it's so perfect. Why does cc make sense? What's it stand for? So it says, I just like the symmetry. All right, that's fair. That's fair. So it says, dot .cpp sucks, I loathe it. You know, I love that you always provide like an unbiased take, so right? I love it. You never bring your own personal bias into things. And it's, uh, it's one thing I love about you. <laughs> so it just gives me Microsoft vibes, ew. <laughs> Lamal, cpp is fine. Microsoft... I mean, there's a reason they're popular. They, they, they didn't do everything wrong, right? The desktop environment they created is honestly pretty good. But the developer environment they created, oh my god, it's horrible. Sarade says, it's subjectively horrible, that's all. <laughs> we should have a poll as to what C++ file extensions people use on the Discord. How do you do a poll on Discord? I don't, I don't, I think you need to be a community server for that, and I haven't even done that yet. I'd have to, like, link to Strawpole or something. So it says, I have a problem with Microsoft C++. So it says, there are no polls on Discord. Just send a message. <laughs> Lit.
plus C plus plus file extensions. Oh, wow. Do you use? <laughs> and have people react to it. That's what we usually do. Okay, hold on. I'll get there. Give me time. <laughs> Eyes equals dot. Oh, God. What are the options? I keep trying to use Emacs commands in Discord and they never work. We'll get one in there. <laughs> We're getting there. Okay. Uh, we'll have thumbs. Uh, we'll have <laughs> that thing equals. <laughs> what is that? Dot cc. CXX. Okay, we're going to start doing something like this. Okay, what is it? Uh, this is going to be I. Can we have a rocket? Let's just do rock. <laughs> Some maniacs use capital C. Oh my god. CC, CPP, CXX. I think that's fine. <laughs> I'm with the eyes on this one. <laughs> okay, should I at notice? Uh, a bunch of VFS stuff. What do we got? Proc FD to FD, where we convert the current process. This is probably good so we don't get like Taktao, uh, this keeping a reference thing. Sorry, it says just add everyone, you coward. Okay. Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> How do I get the notifs roll? You just did. Where are you? Like that. <laughs> Sorry, it says Lamal. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Tell us what you use. <laughs> We've got two CC, three CPP, but that's include. Oh, we got one more with Dapster. Oh, who'd we get? Who'd we get? <laughs> Cyber Patty, Vito, King Buns, A. Hey. <laughs> the, these people know what's up. <laughs> we have any? Hello, 2022. Hey, we have a rock. Oh my God, we have a maniac. Oh, it's a terrific table. <laughs> Words cannot express my disappointment. Lamau. <laughs> we got a 10 or gif that's going to take forever to load. Nice. It wasn't too bad. It's low quality. My favorite type of gif. We have a shared. What is this? Is this rust? <laughs> Where's the lifetime annotations? What's going on? <laughs> Was I, I'm bamboozled. Is this a thing in C++? That's a trailing return type. Nah, that's rust. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you get it. <laughs> Those are usually used if the return type depends on the parameters. C++ has had that for a decade. I love reading stuff like that because it just shows how little I know. It's like, oh, <laughs> a, a 10 years, you say. I guess I didn't get the memo. But I like using it if the type is too long. King Bun says a whole decade. Harry said dot CPP. Oh my God. <laughs> Bless. He blessed us with his presence. Angel, Terry... Thou art in heaven. <laughs> so good. Guys, it's legendary programmer dude. Now the CIA like killed him with a train or something. The, they mind control the train, I heard. Sorry, it says because it means functions line up nicely. I think we should have switched to this syntax everywhere. Is there a reason not to? 
Uh, do you have to put auto at the front? <laughs> we have... Hmm. So I wonder what the override is. King Bun says, why dot CC over CPP? I would have no clue. <laughs> we have 10 people with dot CPP. Oh, 11. Two people with dot CC and one person with a rock. Hostman, no. <laughs> That Terry noticed me. And dot H, if you use HPP, you're cringe. I use H and HPP. Even worse. Oh no. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> King Bun says CPP means C++. CC means Cola Cola. Oh, Coca-Cola. I can't read, man. And CPP is also used as an abbreviation for C preprocessor. I've... Okay. That's fair. I've seen that, and it's confused me. I thought they were talking about C++. That I've ran into that. What does CC mean? <laughs> Good response. Other than carbon copy. Ooh. <laughs> C, but twice. That makes no sense. That is factually true. It is facts, but it isn't. I think it might be cap. <laughs> Sir, it says, I just looks nice, Lamal. It's fine. You can use whatever you want. It's not like it matters. Files are files. I, I'm so glad I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> you ever just think of something and just immediately be glad that you thought it instead of said it? Because I just did that. <laughs> I recommend you do the same. Oh, man. Okay, these all look great. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely update that eventually, but it doesn't matter. We should keep, like, a, a file descriptor count. We may already in the sparse vector, I guess. Sraid says, also regarding trailing return types, I don't know if you missed it, but I like using blah if the type is longer than four chars because it means everything lines up nicely if you have lots of declarations, like in a struct or class. Very nice. That's a good point, because auto is four chars. Very nice. But you didn't do it with sysfd... No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy. It's five chars. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Return... Blah. Return blah. What is this? So this just returns the default, which I think was set to invalid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such an asshole. Uh, instead of for each, we have four. But we, we didn't add a break, coincidentally. We added a return, which is probably important. Because it probably returns from the outer function. Oh, Cotton is live, Pog. He's playing more RimWorld. Elite Monkey 038. Hey, Lens, how you been? How you been, Elite Monkey? It's been some time. <laughs> What's going on? So it says we can just return directly now because it's no longer a lambda. Yes, yes, yes. This returns from the outer function, just like these. It's a good thing. Okay. I think this all looks fine. Everything is fine. Elite Monkey 038 says, I'm good, I'm good, been busy. Nice. That can be good. Time goes by so fast when you're busy. So when we close a process in FreeFD. Hmm. Does files dot erase? Where do we get files from? What is files? Is this right? Does files dot erase account for like another process using it? Files dot erase puts it in the free list. 
Okay, hear me out. Are we going to have a single standard out file and then have multiple process file descriptors map to the same system file descriptor? Or are both of these always unique together? Like, do you get 0, 0, 1, 1? And then in another program, we would get like 2, 0, 3, 1. I'm just curious. Right now, standard in, standard out, standard out are three copies of the same file description. It's currently three different FDs, even in the kernel. I know, so we have three system file descriptors. When we open a new process, but we can change that at some point, yes. So when we open a new process, they get process file descriptors that map to system file descriptors. But multiple process file descriptors get mapped to the, a single system file descriptor. Correct? So it says nope. So we create a new file for each process that we create. So we're going to have like standard in from process A, standard in from process B, standard in from process C. For every process, we open three sysfds and three procfds. It's very primitive right now. Okay. I'm just making sure we don't invalidate something that another process is using because the current process stops using it. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure that we're not like erasing from the global files list standard out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, ah, uh, I mean, it may still work because it's a sparse vector and the index will still be proper, but. So it says, I agree that we should probably have a ref count here. It's okay. That's cool. I just wanted to make sure there was no bugs. I, I saw the erase and my, my spidey, my spidey tingles tingled my webs. <laughs> The index is set to negative one, the index. Oh, so you can't still access the index. Erase invalidates the element. Okay, so we'd still, you would, yeah, okay. You'd catch that bug as well, is what you're saying. That's sweet. Use the default, use four instead of for each. I'm so sad. Uh, return add file, VFS close, maybe unused process. Cannot close invalid process file descriptor interesting <laughs> uh, so we just try and open the file to close it or try and get the file. That's what file is. I, I remember I named it that. It's confusing. A hey, first time chat from Moritz Music. What OS are you working on? Uh, a free and open source OS called Lenser OS. This one. I'm going through a poll request right now by a, a wonderful viewer, Sir Aid. Sir Aid says it maybe should have a better name, lol. File gets the file metadata for an FD. Yes. It should definitely have a better name. Maybe get file. I know that's terrible. Maybe file is fine. Maybe it's fine. So file FD. So basically get the metadata for F. Ensure that it exists. Which means it's valid. But yeah, first time chat from Mord's Music. We are working on Lenser OS. It is available in the Codeberg and GitHub link down below. So it says metadata for FD or something, maybe. Yeah, that'd be fine. Maybe just even file underscore metadata. I can change that real quick. Nah, that's fine. It doesn't need to be in this PR. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Because here's the thing. Sorry, it says all right. Here's the thing. We also use file in all of the storage device drivers and stuff like that. So we'd have to do the whole driver stack, the whole file system driver stack, and go through and change file. It's going to be a whole thing. It's not important. I'll get to it at some point. <laughs> Sorry, it says, I see. Elite Monkey says, yeah, no, nah, this still confuses me. <laughs> Said, so what you doing now? Okay, I missed that earlier. I'm so sorry. What we're doing now is going through a pull request. Basically, this is all virtual file system stuff. Mort's Music says, so this is like new project. Does the system have GUI already? Uh, this is not like a new project. 
<laughs> we're just working on the OS that I started. There's a thousand commits already. King Bun says GUI is for smart people. That's right. We don't, we're not there yet. We're just now getting to a libc that's functional. And once we get this libc up and running, then we have to write a window server with that libc. And then we have to launch the window server from the kernel with the frame buffer mapping as an argument, like where the frame buffer is to write to the hardware. And then the window manager has to be able to write to the hardware based on other processes talking to it, or you have to have, <laughs> this would be horrible, you would have to have syscalls that create and destroy windows and resize the window and stuff like that, which would just be horrible. And each process would be like a megabyte. King Bun says, we can hello world. It's true. I should probably run Lenser OS. Let's just, let's just show you. It's, I don't, I don't think it'll be too difficult. Streama. Oh, I went to the wrong place. I, I'm new keyboard. New keyboard. Well, yep, new keyboard. It's ortholinear, so this is a real mind, mind bender for me. Okay, I can press F5 like that. And basically, we just get to build our kernel. I should probably CD into the kernel first. Because that's where the top level CMake is right now. Because I'm ridiculous. Ridiculously lazy. <laughs> so it says, isn't your current version still broken? I don't know. We're about to see. <laughs> I thought it worked. I thought it at least somewhat worked. Oh, I have to use W. I have to use WSL. Uh, okay. Classic, classic mistake. And then I have to do image GPT. Classic mistakes over here, classic mistakes. And then I'm pretty sure I have to run like scripts, uh, run hda dot backed. <laughs> I have to use backslashes in the second one, don't I? I'm pretty sure I have to use backslashes. Oh, it's really not mad. No matching function for call to map. Rut row. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely broken. Let's go to the other one. Let's see if that's broken. I have many Lenser OS's. One of them works, I promise. Uh-huh. Should be something like that. King Bun says your hard drive knows you have many Lenser OS's. Serade. No, you can't. Oh man. Yeah, I do have to use backslashes, which is what we got to here. Whoops. New keyboard. New keyboard, everybody. Boo -doo -doo -boo -boo. Lando XD says, I have returned. After giving you the ultimate distraction, I needed time to recharge my power. <laughs> wow. By the way, Morris Music says, do you have CI CD for your builds? No. So it says, no one knows what syscalls Windows has. If that is true. Hey. Boo-doo-boo-boo-doo. <laughs> Uh, this is Lenser OS. This is where it's at. You can type stuff in ASCII. Right? You can press like enter and get new lines. You can erase things. You can go up and down, left and right with the cursor and the arrows. Got to figure out where my arrow keys are on this keyboard. You can erase things. You can do a lot. 
Moritz Music says, so these beeps are like an emulated PC speaker. Yeah, it is the PC speaker. King Buns says, they don't really emulate it, they are it. Exactly. King Buns has that exactly correct. Sarayd says, CD for this project? Good luck with that, honestly. Exactly. The build system is a bit too convoluted for that. We could definitely have tests be run by the build system, just not the actual thing itself tested. We couldn't have unit tests, but we could have like end-to-end -end tests. Sarayd says, you can go down slowly, fix that for you. <laughs> what? I don't even know what that's in reference to. Also, Sarayd said, I usually just use the command, this command to run it. cmake dash s user libc dash b out and cmake dash dash build out and remove dash f user standard out. I've, I've never seen curly braces in a path. Bill, curly braces build comma dot close curly braces slash standard out and remove dash f user blaze it same thing blaze it and cmake dash s user standard out dash b user standard out build. You literally rebuild the entire libc <laughs> and then rebuild the kernel and then run qemu lamau this is i just have to show this this is the best <laughs> look at that sorry it isn't even kidding this is what he uses to run lenser os this is what's needed right now <laughs> feast your eyes upon it <laughs> oh lamau Sorry, it says, you can write a testing framework in Algol 68, Lamau. Moritz Music says, oh, you have a mouse in OS. Nice. Yes, you can draw. You can change the color with right click to a random color. So you can uh, start, you know, doodling if you want. Make little layered, layered drawings. This is basically just to ensure that I could get the mouse working. You know what I mean? Wee. I have dollar signs in my eyes. <laughs> I'm 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 silly. King Bun says he's more of a small talk bro. <laughs> Sorry, it says I've programmed an algo before. If that's what you're asking, I wouldn't call myself an expert though. Mort's music says I tried Cobble recently. It's really easy language, but for easy tasks. Lol. <laughs> Sorry, it says my condolences. Moritz Music says, so the mouse is PS2 or USB? It's PS2. USB would be a whole, whole thing. That's a lot of drivers that we don't have right now. But that's Lenser OS. It takes 10 megabytes. How about that? Dapster says, you, you guys have yet to experience the euphoria of figuring out APL. <laughs> well, now. Where are we going? Okay, write. Why did write change? Because it takes a proc FD now. This is fine. This is basically just making sure it's valid. Could we also do FD valid? I guess this is a little more intensive than FD valid. Mr. Mugume says, oh god, how about that? Mort's music says, like, I wanted to see how to work with TCP IP in Cobble, and it ended up calling POSIX sockets, but in convoluted manner. What would be a lot better to do in C? Here's a hint. Most languages just use the libc. <laughs> That's their trick. <laughs> There's one trick that every developer doesn't want you to know. Use libc. <laughs> No, libc is good. It does a lot of things. So it's used in almost and by almost every everything. Mort's music libc stands for lib cobble. <laughs> so cursed. Lamau. King Bun says, not sure common business oriented language is my go-to for TCP IP. Lamau, yeah, definitely not. Definitely not for TCP. So the file changed to a pointer because we just got rid of this little reference. I mean, it's still 
It's still a reference, but it's a pointer. Don't tell anybody. Should these be dots? Because this is a reference. Am I wrong? Also, since we're talking about Algol, the Algol 68 spec is something else. Uh, <laughs> the yield of a serial clause in an environment E in the yield of the elaboration of its series or any of series elaborated in its place 5.4.4.2 in the environment established B around E according to that serial clause. Oh yeah, you know, clear. References use dot, but in this case, arrow is overloaded. Nice. Is it really? <laughs> did I do that? I'm sorry if I did. Lando XT says cobble plus plus. Oh no. Dapster says, sorry, I don't know if you answered this already, but would you ever think about writing a kernel in your programming language you've been developing? I'm not sure what a programming language requires in order to be able to have the capabilities of being an OS lang. We could absolutely write an OS in the fun compiler language. But we would need some features first like bit fields, or at least a way to access bits and do bitwise operations. At least. And then ideally, you really need structs to be able to interact with hardware because they have specific layouts in memory for how they operate. So to be able to, you need to be able to really control the layout of a struct on the lowest level. So we would have to implement structs, which is like, a whole thing. <laughs> it's a whole thing. So we, I'm probably not ever going to write a kernel in it, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't. You could do it now. It would just be almost in, it would be almost impossible. <laughs> we, you'd probably also need like for loops and while loops and a way to better distinguish uh, types at compile time and uh, probably a way to deal with strings in a much better way than encoding them into integers. <laughs> There's a lot to do still. We're only, we're only just starting on the compiler. It's a large project. Suraid says it's a shared putter, shared putter overloads arrow. Nice, okay. So, oh, interesting. That makes sense, that makes sense. So we have a reference to a shared putter which overloads arrow, so we use it, nice. Add file, if not process, process equals current process. Creating a file descriptor mapping with our fancy debug message. Add the file descriptor to the global file table. Allocated new sysfd after pushing back. Global, yes, okay. Does this create a new file? Is this what this syntax is? What is this? Add the file descriptor to the local process table. That's a destructuring assignment. Okay, so it's like un unzipping in Python. I get you. Proc and proc fd, return the files. Return the file descriptors. Okay, that's looking good to me. I see what you're doing now. Sorade says pushback returns a pair in this case, I think. C++ continues to surprise me, by the way. I want to implement a lisp that takes advantage of the syntax. Like, make a macro that defines the left bracket as auto left bracket. Mort's music says tuple. <laughs> Where are we? VFS.h. Mount point equals default, so we get a default destructor. We have file descriptors. We have VFS gaining proc FD, free FD. These changed from down here, I think. I don't know. That just gets file metadata. Unique putter, standard out driver, that's fine. Looking good. And then our sparse vector of shared putter files. 
Very cool. Sorry, it says temp lisp go burr lamau. You have to do it with templates. If you're implementing a lisp DSL in C++, you have to do it with templates, temp lisp go burr. And then we'll just make like the, uh, we'll just make parentheses be a really convoluted macro so that you can just write lisp, but it turns into C++. Probably be easier to just make a lisp programming language and have it transpile to C++, honestly. Uh, standard include algorithm moved. That's fine. We have no accept on the atomics. That's pretty important. I like it. We have colors.h, which is pretty f hilarious. I like that we have colors.h. This is actually sweet. We're eventually going to want to support uh, more than just colors. Maybe this should be like VT100. Also, we support colors in Lenser. We can definitely have colors here. Just make it like this and if def hide you are color codes. You know what I mean? And then add this else. Mort's music says color OS, Lamau. There's definitely already color output. We have decals for libc. Stringification and concatenation. Nice. So this puts x directly next to y. This puts x directly next to y. This stringifies x. Basically, this is just preprocessor nonsense. Yes. <laughs> flatten, attribute flatten, that's fine. No discard. Perfect. Oh no. Interesting. We have our libc terminate even work in the kernel because it's not part of libc anymore. Probably should get rid of libc terminate, but it's fine. It's not a big deal right now. Sraid says, but hash hash doesn't expand macros. To expand macros first and then concatenate them, you have to wrap them. Insanity. X hash hash, X hash, hash y concatenates x and y, so foo underscore hash hash bar is foo underscore bar. But hash hash doesn't expand macros. To expand macros first and then concatenate them, you have to wrap them. That's insanity. That is insanity. Uh, what is this? Concepts. Convertible to... Oh my. I'm going to ignore this. C string. I understand that. <laughs> C++ 20 stuff. Haha. <laughs> oh god. Sentinel. Sparse vector. L's. Indices? There's definitely better names for these things. Elements and indices was very hard to parse for me. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? ELS and IDXS. I feel like I'm in an airplane. KV iterator? What is KV? This is amazing. What is this? A sparse vector. KV. Kernel vector. <laughs> Extensions are Lenser OS extensions to the C++ standard. So this is just Lenser OS. KV equals key value. Oh, that makes sense. Key value iterator. I should have known that. So we have a pair index type type operator. Very nice. <laughs> I can pretend to understand half of this underscore p it just gets the putter indices pop back this does the free list thing 
iterators, manipulating elements, just erase, pair, clear and delete. That would make sense. Swade says, I mean, if there's anything you want explained. I know, I can ask. I don't know if I want to go down this rabbit hole. This is a lot. I'm just looking at it to make sure it doesn't, like, uh, do something crazy. Okay. Oh my. Oh my, oh my. Oh my. Nani? Wish I could do that high pitched sound. <laughs> Format. Nice. So this is in the kernel, kernel print helper, with lots of string view stuff, debug M-E-S-G, did I do that? So it says format, prepare to enter the shadow realm. <laughs> uh, you know, just readable code. I wonder if we could write a program that like parses C++ identifiers and puts underscore underscore before them. We could just run that before the build system. Integer formatter, supported formats, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Format implementation, sanity check. We should probably say confidence check. I'm, I'm not going to leave a comment because I know you're listening. I might have misspelled debug message there, but I don't know. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's no dbg mesg as well. It's okay. It's on line 80 in format. What if you write a program that parses C++? I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> Lamau. Uh, but yeah, we should probably use the terms confidence check. Just to be, uh, I think sanity check is phased out. Along with the terms abort and terminate and things that have to do with uh, unpleasant ideas that can be avoided when working in code. Like sanity. Who wants to think about sanity? <laughs> Nobody's sane. Parsing C++ requires full context for evaluation. Just use a library. So it says, I really disagree with that. Everyone uses those terms. I, they did use those terms, but they you don't have to anymore. <laughs> There's no reason it can't be confidence check. You're the only one I've ever seen complain about it candidly. Well, welcome. I'm glad I could be your first. Uh, we start at the beginning of the format string. Pause. Format one argument. Old pause. Pause. Find not. Found. Format specifier starts with blah, but a double blah blah is escaped. Find the next blah. Double blah blah or escaped. The character is not the one we're looking for. That's an invalid format string. Yes. Okay. Events past the start. Perfect. Append the string up to the format specifier. Very good. Parse the format specifier and format the argument. Format each argument. What is... Where are we? This is format 1. Thread says, that syntax is horrible, that's a fold expression. It's how you iterate over template parameter packs. Huh. Okay. I'm gonna trust you on that one. Uh, format, find first of blah, pause, pause, invalid format, string, and the rest of the string. I like it. Can't believe this is all const expert. My, my. So now, 
not defined kernel. Where's defined kernel? Here. Okay. There's an else. I just missed it. We have print, which just does some crazy format stuff. What is context? <laughs> Did you write a parser? Lamau. Iterator. You write you wrote like all of the standard C library. It's pretty amazing. Memory, which includes atomic, that's fine. I'm just gonna assume you didn't screw up shared putters, by the way. Um that I'm I think that's safe to do. Mutex got moved, new got created. Very good. Standard def got moved to standard def. That's fine. Compile time type identity. Okay. Check if a type is assigned integer. Oh my. <laughs> More template shenanigans. Oh wow. I like how this got cleaned up. That's cool. Context is defined in the line above. You should really go get those glasses, Lamau. Is it really? <laughs> I don't even remember where it was. Oh, this is a variable declaration, yeah, of a Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's not my glasses, it's definitely the code. Do you see these underscores? <laughs> it's horrid. Bits, decals. Ah, yes, standard includes string, file diff too large. We have mem copy available in C. We have standard, lots of string stuff. We have a basic string. Should probably have string as well somewhere here, which is based on basic string. There they are. Beautiful stuff. By the way, I wrote a summary about how SSO strings work. I can send you the PDF if you're interested. <laughs> I'm definitely interested. I won't read it on stream, but I am definitely interested. Small string optimization is very interesting to me. Compile time type identity. I still don't remember what that is. We now have is integral as that, is floating point. We have long double type now, just to put at the end of all of this template. True type uh, is function, okay. Lots of template stuff. Where are we still? Are we still in, yeah, type traits. Let's get out of there. <laughs> Vector. Include memory heap. Should probably use angle brackets, angle braces, it doesn't matter. Type identity is because of the template parameter inference nonsense. You're better off not knowing, honestly. <laughs> you are correct. Uh huh. Looking good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, don't worry about that. We'll get there. Target link options. I think, yeah, these were already options in the... What is... Is that libgcc? That's probably libgcc. That's probably important to link to in libc. I DM'd you the PDF. Bless. Libc standard. I like the comments. Archive and object files. Libc standard headers. These are now... Hmm. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I was like, 
do we still need these? We do still need these, they're just copied down here. It was funny. Standard header shared with the kernel. Did this change? Hold on. Inkbits Duckles. Did you rename that? Where is it? Bits Standard Utility. Didn't you get rid of bits? I think you got rid of bits. I should just search for standard decals, but I'm I'm too far into it at this point. Nope, it's still in bits. There's standard bits and libc bits now. Yep, you got me. You got me with that one. You got me. Oh. Okay, we're good. Okay, a little bit further. Here we go. We're good. Everything's still good. Valid paths. Yeah, that's fine. Oh boy. ABI.cpp. Global constructors and destructors. Internal state and implementation. So add exit handles and lists. Figure out why this is defined by the compiler when compiling, but not when compiling for the host. DSO handle. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> One second. I'm pretty sure that's in the kernel. DSO handle is for C++ static initialization nonsense. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Internet uh, uh, has slowed down. We'll keep going. I'm pretty sure I... <laughs> nope, that's, that's pure virtual. Not quite. Not quite the same. I don't think it's in the kernel. I just remember defining DSO handle because I kept getting warnings. And I feel like I may have left it in there. <laughs> oh well. You have CXA pure virtual, but that's it. Okay. Then we're good. We're good. Registers the function to be called when DSO is unloaded. What does DSO stand for? something I've never learned. Unload DSO and call its add exit callbacks. The callbacks are called in reverse order. Yes, yes, yes. Due to the way the list is constructed, we can just iterate over the list. I love linked lists. They're so easy to reverse. Dynamic shared object. Oh yeah, clearly. Dynamic shared object handle. Okay. Call global constructors. Call, yeah, call find the DSO. Okay, we're good. Call global constructors, init malloc, call all these, call global destructors, finny malloc, finalized, run main, libc init, extension, main, argc, libc finny return ret. Attribute no return, libc exit status. Looking very good. Looking very good. We now have abi.h instead of new.h or whatever. Yep. Where we define DSO handles, cbarg, and cb. Well, there you go. Un underscore t, that is. Mr. Mugume says, damn, shitty operating system. What? <laughs> Windows? New... New went to abi.h. Diff is having a stroke. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think this happened. <laughs> Mr. Mugame says DSO made damn shitty OS. Lamau. I like it. I understand now. DSO. I totally missed it. I totally missed it, Mr. Mugame. That's on me. We now have file struct. Why'd we get rid of these? Is git diff just freaking out again? Yep. 
Maybe it's, I don't know. They should be fine. IO flags T. These are somewhere else now. Okay. F unused, unused, unused. You don't have to name an unused parameter. I like it. I'm, I understand what that is now. It's in bits io defs dot h lamau. King Von says git seizure. That's right. <laughs> Just foaming at the mouth. Uh, this is private, so we can make sure that no one creates a dangling file putter. That's correct. I think that's awesome. List of open files. So this means that people have to call open in order to create a new file putter, and it has to succeed and stuff like that. Clear buffers, close the stream, erase, flush, reassociate, screw reassociate, close all. Is that a thing? Does that close standard out even? That'd be a... Can you reopen standard out? <laughs> Just a question. Get pause, set pause, seek, tell. We have ftel? Is that ftel? Isn't ftel... Maybe we have a define. Does it just tell? And yes, you can close standard out. That's why I have per, that's why we have per process FD tables now. Lumao, that's true. That's true. If you close it, can you then reopen it? What's the path? Ftel is the libc function. Oh, that we're in bits. Okay. This is the member function of our file structure. Uh, structure. I sound like I'm speaking Old English. Bibuff, libuff, nibuff. Full buffering, line buffering, and no buffering. That's fine. Nice, you have a nice enum for it too. If we have SSC2 and 0, <laughs> I like it. Uh, Yeah, standard IO. You did so much. This is a huge PR. I love it. This is the member function implementing that. Yeah, yeah, yes. Extensions, stub, file struct in standard IO. We moved size T. Okay, define lock. Stream, unique lock, concatenate. Lock encounter. Okay. Stream mutex. Initialization, internal definitions, and state. Open files and the big file lock. <laughs> Thanks, POSIX. Here's that size T again. I'm sure all of this stuff just moved down. And git is just freaking out. Counter is a macro that expands to a new number every time it is expanded. That's so we can define RAAI locks using a macro. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How do you know its name? No file. For buffering, for error, for ah, for has ungotten. Interesting. Doing some pragmas here, I see. We have close. I can't wait to debug this. <laughs> uh -huh. Looking pretty good. Hey, that looks much better. We now actually have a separate one for each one. Standard error is unbuffered. I like that. Standard IO Finny, we can now use close all. That's pretty dope. Stream erase instead of stream delete. Lush. Also, this do not lock the stream here. Was that because... <laughs> 
You could you could get into a deadlock, right? Or where you try and lock it twice. So it says yes. I get it now. Cause if yeah. Now it's a recursive mutex, so it's okay. That makes sense. So it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> File create instead of stream create. Lock lock. Reassociate FD. Lock stream set its buffering mode. That's set buff and set vbuff, isn't it? Yeah. Craziness. Puts. Unget C. That confused me. I was like, we're in puts. And then it was unget C. I was like, hmm. Uh, but we unget a character after locking. It unlocks immediately after. Very cool. That's fine. We have assert.h now. That's pretty pog. libc.finny.malloc is no longer this GNU destructor thing, which is interesting. Add exit at quick exit. I'm going to assume you did those right. Basically, malloc must be initialized before anything else. And the compiler was placing static variables before that. Ah, yes, that makes sense. <laughs> I see what you're doing now to get around it. Nice. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> And we have some tests. Okay, there's even more. There's more. Test.c, which became test.cc. Why is this not a rename? <laughs> Include format standard AO main print. Hello. So this is a, a format test, not necessarily test.cc. We have unistida. If def lenser defines standard out and in and error file numbers. I uh, we're, No, we're just copying standard in is zero, standard out is one, standard there is is two now. Test.cc is the test, not a test. That's why it's just called that. Well, I see. <laughs> There's only one test. And here's our hello friends. And then we have standard out recompiled and I'm sure ready to include this new stuff. Oh my lord. Honestly, it looks pretty good. Did anything change while we were there? I don't think so. <laughs> Synopsis. <laughs> Better standard I.O., small string optimization strings, very simple, Lamal. There are some bugs, but mostly it works. That's perfect. I think we're just going to uh, rebase and fast forward. These are all good names. Uh, yeah, are we good? That's supposed to say very simple format. It doesn't. <laughs> I think in Markdown, you have to escape arrows, tags. It got rid of it because it thought it was a tag rip. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we should be good. Should be good. <laughs> I think this check is not correct. I like these fix me's. It's okay. Uh, are we, are, do you think we should just get this merged? I think it's, I think it's good enough. I'm not really worried about it. Get things, get things rolling, and then uh, do some coding. Yeah, I think you can merge it. Alrighty, it's happening. There may be some bugs. It may not work, or there may be some bugs. Do you think I, if we merge it and I clone it, will we get to Hello World, or Hello Friends, I should say? But last I checked, it worked on my machine. So it says there may be some bugs. Okay, I trust you. 
King Month's Are We Hello World Yet? dot org. I think you will get to Hello World. Okay. It's done. We'll see how it goes. Uh, also. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> so there's a lot going on in the Discord. Floating point integers take inspiration from the scientific note uh, as defined. Uh, floats both of them in the stack, which is efficient. Is that a M dash? Which is more efficient? Interesting. Okay, sorry. I'm just updating. We'll get there. Uh, yeah. So now I just have to go to Emacs and clone this baby. Okay, let's keep the one that works and clone over the one that's broken, right? I think that would make most sense. Let's see where, well, let's see. Is it gonna work? Chat, is it gonna work? Are we gonna be able to compile after the merge? Is, is it gonna be horribly broken? We will never know. We're gonna fetch all our remotes. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff to do. Yep, 15 commits. Oh, I have made a mistake. There we go. New keyboard. Looking good. King Bun's git pray. <laughs> yeah, just run git pray. That's so funny. We have nothing in our working tree, so we can just uh, do a poll which is really just a merge because we've already fetched. So we're just merging from origin main, I think. Is that, yeah, that's where we're at, which is Codeberg. There we go. And now, interesting, it goes up a folder. I just got confused why it said kernel 2022. But it goes up a folder if they're named the same thing. Emacs is so pog. Now. Oh. <laughs> Why is the HPED included? Okay, hold on. Hold on. This means we have a big if def around the hpet stuff. Rerun CMake maybe? Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, WSL, CMake. Uh, dash B, I gotta remember how to type, build. And do all that. And then I'm gonna just type enter, but then I'm gonna have to remove the stuff, right? That's what that said. Configuring incomplete errors occurred. Uh, I have to use the special CMake, remember? That's what the issue is, isn't it? That's what the issue is, isn't it? <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. I've got to find where it is. I'm pretty sure it's in downloads. Where did I even put it? Is it in programs? Oh, God. Just doing some searching. One moment. Okay, I found it. Okay, so now I gotta come in here. And this is actually that. And then, here's the thing, this is WSL. <laughs> Whoops. So we have to use forward slashes. And slash mount slash D. Okay, it still didn't work. The HPET is still being included for some reason. It's fine. It's old code. Virtual memory manager candidate. Yeah, that's the one. Why is the HPET having shit included? Please let me know. No H what? It <laughs> doesn't know? Like, yeah, I can't get you there, dog. Oh, God. This is becoming a mess. Okay. 
so this memory map is a problem on line 72 because but so it's vbox not being defined why would that not be defined <laughs> you should really just make a shell alias for that listen i'm not that complicated i'm a simple man so we can just fix this memory map I'm pretty sure we just need to map it as like global honestly i don't want to do this though like i don't i don't want to use the h pack right now please don't make me use it why why is vbox not defined ah target compile definitions machine and arch okay machine should refer to the config.cmake machine vbox i'm gonna just i'm gonna just delete i'm gonna just delete and remake i'm not <laughs> i'm not that complicated proceeds to spend 30 seconds composing some horrible cmake shell command instead of spending 15 seconds making an alias that doesn't make any sense if the alias includes the horrible cmake shell command it means it'd take at least as long to write that so it'd be 30 plus 15 seconds right am i crazy i'm i mean i am crazy don't answer that but boom Okay. Oh, I do love how this keyboard sounds. I bet you you guys do too. <laughs> I think I think remaking it worked. Sraid says, if you copy it from the shell history, that then that's fewer than 30 seconds. Lamau. Oh, oh, my toes. I have so much. <laughs> Bud, no. <laughs> the infinite reboot cycle. What have you done? What have you done? It's printing hello, friends. Oh, we, <laughs> we made it eventually. Yeah, <laughs> just reboot your computer 10 times. Are we out of RAM? Oh, wait, I know the issue. <laughs> ah, we literally ran it over and over until we had just enough RAM. Look at that. We literally are within 200 by 120 bytes. Uh, <laughs> we may be using slightly more RAM. We have 124. That's incorrect. We don't have 124 kilobytes, do we? Oh, we do. These are kilobytes. We have 124 kilobytes. Look at that. Look at that. I still can't read. I need glasses. That's incredible. <laughs> uh. So let's increase the memory. Malik needs a one megabyte static buffer. So we could just get rid of that. Hold on. You want to see everything break? No, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. Don't do that, please. I'm not. <laughs> just increase the memory from like 100 megabytes. Uh, script and run you ready okay run dot bat oh god well, first, let's figure out how much memory we need. So let's use the one we're using. Run hda.bat. Excuse me? No matches? That was weird. Just add an extra zero or two. 
No. King Buns, won't make alias, makes batch file. Correct. <laughs> that means everybody can use it, bud. Just saying. Just saying. Uh... Yeah, this should be enough. There's only like three user space processes. <laughs> Good thing it still works so well. Are we ever going to eventually make it? We can try. We make it this time? Okay. Again, very little memory free. We used as much memory as, as there is, which makes me think there's a problem with how much memory is being allocated for something. Because we just are using the max amount of memory. I don't think that's enough memory. <laughs> Sir Aid. Sir Aid. <laughs> that should be enough. I don't think that's enough memory. <laughs> Oh, I love it. There might be a leak, but I find that unlikely. Okay. I'm gonna credit you with ruining Lenser OS's memory. <laughs> Serade says that should be enough was in reference to just add an extra zero or two. Oh, Lamau. See, but I'm not paying attention. So I just read that should be enough and I'm like, oh, 128, that's enough. I'm good, fam. Apparently not. Or not. Nope. I have a feeling it's not the memory. Because we just doubled it. You should not need double... <laughs> what are you using 130 megabytes of memory for? <laughs> it might not be the memory, lol. I would vote with it's not. Yep, you just use the max amount of memory possible. You use all of it. We're allocating three files, that's it. Well, obviously, it's something other than those three files. Or you're doing it over and over and over again. Because the kernel's fine, baby. Kernel is fine. We got a good heap going. You know, it's pretty... Look at that. That's very, very good. Everything is working with the file system. I know what it could be. Okay. What could it be? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to hear. What? I'm holding control. Thank you. There's some function that rounds up when they allocate. Maybe one of them has a bug. Okay, hold on. When you allocate in mallet, uh, like here, or in libc. Does this just call? We have new, no accept, blah, blah, blah. We have malloc here. So that's probably just a header. I'd maybe recommend logging the allocation standard vector push back, for instance. So like put logging in here. Oh man. Oh man. I'll get there. Hold on. Uh huh. Okay. So in both of these, you could log every time Malik is called. Ooh. Okay. There's so much I'm remembering right now. <laughs> okay. Heap alloc. Allocate a new pointer on the heap. If not, heap has space size return null putter. 
void putter, heap putter, heap putter plus equals size. So you have a bump out, yeah, a bump allocator basically. Okay, so turn the next free header if there is one. If free headers, alloc header, header equals free headers, free headers equals header next, return header, nice. Otherwise allocate a new one, which uses heap allocate to allocate a header, which just allocates the thing. You can free a header find a block in the free list, maybe even print the size using standard print. Ah, yes. Hope it doesn't crash. I mean, technically, hello friends is being printed out, so we should be good. So you log every time malloc is called. Malloc was supposed to be around here. Here's realloc implementation, libsy init malloc, finny malloc. Air no location. Did I pass? No, okay. Malik interface. Craziness. Align to max align T. Where is that? Can I can I look? Okay. It's up above. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Max align equals a line of max align T, which is eight in 32 bit. I'm pretty sure it's my clang D. So it's probably 16 on 64 bit. N equals, if N is not zero, otherwise it equals max align. So if n is not 0, then n plus max align minus 1, and not max align minus 1. What are you even trying to do here? Align a number to the maximum possible alignment. So it's making sure all the bits aren't set. This is confusing. 16 in 64 bit. This rounds up to the nearest multiple of the max alignment. Okay, so you basically do a modulo yourself here. Is that what I'm getting at correctly? You say, okay, if n isn't zero, then add basically 15 to it, right? And then and it with not 15 which means that any bits that you just set won't be set, no? But this number still goes up if it needs to roll over to the next multiple of 16. Okay, I, I see it. It's probably right. I see what you're doing now. It's just that that was a rough one. <laughs> so if we have a free block, use it. blah 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 add the block to the allocated list allocate the memory allocate memory for the block so this is for the header this is for the payload add it to a list footer equals footer size equals bytes next equals alloc list if alloc list alloc list maybe block alloc list. So when you're iterating, how do you get to the next header? While block block equals block next, okay. So this adds to the head. If alloc list, alloc list previous equals block. alloc list equals block. So yeah, we're adding to the head of alloc list here after initializing the block. First time chat, I'm on Linux. Hi there, I wish nice stream and night. Thanks, I'm on Linux. I'm on Windows, <laughs> sadly. So it says this is basically just a doubly linked list. Yeah, 
Next and Prev. We're good. I'm just making sure I understand. So heap alloc. We're gonna do. Oh boy, new keyboard. Printf. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I knew it. Sorry, immediately. Don't use printf. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Is it format, by the way? <laughs> printf is not implemented. I'm on Linux. Says I saw bottom line. You liar. What? Standard print. Standard format. Only formats. Okay. I want to make sure. Standard print. And we basically want to print a ha ha, which is here now, my right thumb. We want to print a ha ha and say that this is allocated block. This is horrible. Do, I'm, I'm assuming I have to put new lines. And we're basically going to put something like that like does this work do I have to put the colon or no I'm sorry what's the name for huh <laughs> the name for this is a format format specifier but I just call it huh works for numbers okay what is block That was messy. What is block? I cannot type, but what is it? Anonymous namespace alloc header. Okay. Block is a pointer. Okay. That's what I was hoping. <laughs> block and footer. We're just going to do that. Do you think this will still... So this is in standard lib.cpp. This means I have to recompile libc cast block to uint putter t or it won't work. Okay. I'm assuming you mean also pointer. Okay. Oh, sorry, also said it twice. I just only saw the second one. Bless. Allocated block. Okay. Maybe we'll just do that. We'll see how it works. And now, because format currently can only handle char, construct, pointer, string view, string, and integers, and that's it. That's fine. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, so... I have to run... Not that. Is there a target now? I don't remember. I haven't been... I haven't done this. Do I just build? Do I have to use the fancy CMake in WSL? I probably do because I don't have the tool chain for Windows built yet. I should probably just do that off screen so that I can stop doing this craziness. Uh, so it says, just build libc, that'll also copy the headers. Okay. I don't think I have a build thing here. So I'm just going to make a build thing. Dash B build. King Bun's links to Lenser OS. The cat walked in. Probably going to kick her out. Is this copy? You said just doing that. Oh no, I just configured it. Now I have to build it. Yes, I know, kitty. One second. I'm... 
Oh. Hopefully that's not too bad. Sorry about that. King Bun says Kitty says hi. She did. I think she just wants her uh her food for the, today. But she'll be fine. Huh. What have I done? Is that me? Um. Huh. Fatal error. VA def snow shots file or directory. What is VA defs? LLVM lib clang 1503 include VA defs? What is that? Why would that be included? What did you do? I didn't, did I change that somehow? I mean, I'm on stream. What? Okay. Maybe your egglet did something. Maybe. My language server? Clang might have added that. That'd be crazy. Did it do it again? Okay, I'm gonna freak out. Standard print is not a member. Why is, why? What have you done? Did you force color output, you madman? You forced color output, didn't you? In the CMake. I'm pretty sure I, I feel it coming. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm about to see. Of course I forced color output. No. <laughs> God. Otherwise those template errors are unreadable. So unreadable. Yeah, it was so much more readable before. Jesus Christ. King Bun says color. King Buns, what are we, British? <laughs> it's not my fault that Emacs is too primitive to support color output. It's not too primitive. There's just a different shell you can use in Emacs that supports it. It's called ANSI term or term. So guess what? It's not Emacs, it's me. I just use eShell, which means that eShell does its own syntax highlighting. It doesn't need, it doesn't need fancy color. <laughs> Color commands. King Bun says V term is better. Thread says then use that shell. I don't like that shell. If you aren't using V term, what are you doing? You're probably using Windows. Print is not a member of standard. Ah, good. What do I include? Uh, it worked. Built target C and install libc. Okay. Now I have to rebuild the user space programs, right? Just checking. It's been a little bit. Uh, so it says yes. Okay. Here we go. We, again, I'm working on the top level CMake. It's not easy. This is a lot, but it, it will be better soon. Blaze it slash build. Okay. Uh, and then we should probably copy it. Blaze it. So blaze it slash build slash blaze it to blaze it. Slash blaze it. Okay. And then we can do the same for what? Yep, I'm a genius. Here, here's what I can do. Look at this. 
boink. Oh, that's the wrong button. I don't remember it. There we go. That was beautiful, was it not? Emacs. You're basically doing that already, just as like six separate commands. You're correct, just use this shaking my head. But here's the thing, I'd have to convert each of those CMakes to the proper CMake path. It's horrible. Okay, so now everything should be updated. So when I go back to the kernel... Oh, what did I press? Okay. We can now... Once more do the kernel thing. So you keep bothering me to make an alias. Other people don't benefit from an alias. So having me inconvenienced by not having an alias is very nice. You definitely wrote some fucked up shit, Serade. <laughs> You're dereferencing a null putter. That happens to be your instruction address. You're jumping to a null putter. What have you done? <laughs> we just get faulty address, so it's just a page fault. That's all we know. Read from a page. Not It is an instruction fetch, so the instruction address just got fucked. So it says, how did that happen? Oh dear. Well, you called, I'm guessing, a function pointer that was null or something happened where when the scheduler cleared out the process it then tried to return to the process for some reason but i doubt that because it was working before we also get no allocated block that's probably what this is from honestly it's from standard format I don't think I'm even using function pointing anywhere. I'm on Linux as plus one for non-alias user. I'm lazy to track aliases, but not lazy for writing again and again. <laughs> I just, I, in an open source project, I think all the tooling should be open source. An alias is not open source. And it's not even transferable, really. A shell script, that's open source and transferable. If you're not using function pointers anywhere, then how did it happen? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't write it. Uh, what do we get? There's a lot of craziness here. An alias is not open source. Neither is the absolute path to make to CMake25 on your system, just saying. Right, but that's why it would just be a CMake definition, where when I configure the CMake build in the top level, I'll just say, hey, use this path. Or in the shell script, instead of running CMake, I could just say, hey, run the environment variable CMake. And then you can just set CMake to whatever you want. And if CMake isn't set, then it sets it to just the word CMake. It's not that complicated. You guys are really bashing me for no reason. I think you gotta reevaluate your life choices. I'm on Linux says, what happens if aliases and dot files, which open source? Hmm, oh God, that sounds horrible. That'd be like providing Emacs Lisp commands for <laughs> like, yeah, here's how to build it. Just download this, uh, this OS Emacs and then, uh, you know, Sorry, it says, you guys are really bashing me. Pun intended. Hey, someone got it. <laughs> oh. I'm like a fish out of water. I'm on Linux, says, that was good. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't even know what you've done. How have you done such things? How did you end up at <laughs> instruction address zero?
I don't even know. What am I trying to print? A string? So const our putter. So we have, this is all the cost chart putters. Fuck me, man. Is it that confusing? Okay, formatters, format implementation. So we have a string view of format. If there are no, if there are none found, what happens? You're printing numbers, the format args are numbers. Okay. That's fair. I just, uh, the format string got to me. So we have a string view format string. If none are found, it'll just fall through to the end. Hmm. Which is, I mean, it's const expert, so that shouldn't really be a big deal. This should all happen at compile time. So here, I mean, this should just return to wherever it went. Also, if it compiles, yeah, it's not standard format. It could be here, but it, I don't think it's here. So what happens when you create a context? Because the code is run at compile time. Most of it is. So we'd be running this one. Oh my. So it says, nope. The only thing that isn't happening at compile time is the actual printing. Nope, that's in the kernel. Okay, Jesus, if not defined. Why? <laughs> Why would you do it backwards like this? You're running the second user space overload of print, okay. That's right, because standard out is automatic. Okay, so we have a format string. Then we have args. We forward the args. We move the format string. And we call just print, which calls this, which means we print to standard out. Okay, so. Okay, it's not that. I was going to say if our system devices are null, then they may have null drivers, and we may be jumping into a null driver in the kernel, but no, it's fine. Also, the, the heap is now two pages large. Look at that. We got a big heap. wonder what's in it. Oh, Lord. So we have... Process zero. So this is the kernel process. This is user space process number one, blaze it. And then this is user space process number two. And the instruction pointer isn't printed here. Classic. Because it's not part of the, uh, that you can't really print the instruction pointer when you're in executing things. The instruction pointer will obviously be different. A little bit of a segmented heap, but not bad. We could also reduce the size of the heap, but we don't have that implemented. I'm on Linux says, how we ignored runtime. If there is an error, then it doesn't compile. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> That's true, but aren't there any runtime issues like wrong formatting, etc.? I don't know exact problem implementation, just curious. That's the crazy thing. He actually implemented all of the formatting during, uh, during compile time. It's all checked and type checked and everything. So we're trying to jump into puts, right? Uh, let's 
Sarade, I hope you have an idea of what's wrong, because I have no idea what's wrong. The code that appends the formatted args might have a bug. Forward? That's at the very top. Oh, rip. Detail format context append here. Is there an implementation? That seems like I'm in the right spot. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You write to a file. String view dot data. One SV size file. Where's F right? Standard IO dot H. Okay. From libc. F right is just in standard IO. I don't think there's any way to lock. You change the lock. Unique lock, concatenate counter, string mutex. Could that be it? Could it be lock freaking out and somehow jumping to a null pointer? And we have stream right. What is stream right? So that's got to be in. That's probably in what? Sys file? Bits? Okay. File right or IO file right? Okay. I'm on Linux says, thank you for your stream. I got to go to a meeting. I'll follow the project and try to join streams. Have a nice day slash night, Lenser Sir Aid. Awesome. Thank you. I'm on Linux. Hopefully you have a great meeting and good luck. Thanks for the well wishes. It's in standard IO.cpp as well. What? Okay. Right is right character. It's got to be something else. Okay. String and size. So right takes string and size, which means wherever we just were is gone because I went here, by the way. Why was I here? I was somewhere. F right. Okay. We have a reinterpret cast to a restricted const char putter, putter, size times number of members. I mean, there's not really a way that's going to be jumping to null putter, is there? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
So standard out equals file create in the GNU constructor. And then we use it. Is it possible somehow that standard out's being used before it's created? I don't think so. F puts at least definitely works though. We got hello friends earlier. That's true. Before we triple faulted. And F puts uses this entire stack. Well then, what is it? <laughs> Can't you like GDB it? When you jump to a null pointer, there's not much to GDB about, but <laughs> GDB doesn't know why you're at null. Goes, I, I, don't. I guess we could step through bit by bit and see where it jumps to null. But we'd literally just be stepping until it happens, which is all the way up until enabling interrupts. Just step through the entire thing. Uh, what is the stack pointer? 18ccf8. Is that right? 18ccf88. Well, that means that we can tell which process is screwing up. It is definitely process two, standard out. Can't you set a breakpoint or something? Interesting. Yes, we could. It's probably a good idea. Well, let's try it. I can't run this from here. Okay. Oh, it wants me to... It's like, why is it taking so long? Okay. D slash programming. That's nearly the one. We weren't able to run the file, so we're going to have to do connect something like that. What is it? I don't remember what it is. Uh, dot gdb init target remote localhost. That's what it is. Okay, so qemu is paused at boot. We can now connect to it over the local network. We can specify our symbol file, which is going to be kernel bin kernel elf. Perfect. And now we can set a breakpoint. Here's the thing where do we set this breakpoint? Like in K stage one, I guess. Uh, da -da -ba. Okay, very bottom. Line 618. Okay, let's try and use that then. Let's put a breakpoint in kstage1.cpp. Line 618. Is this how this works? Make breakpoint pending on... No. No symbol table is loaded. Is it not... Why do we not have debug symbols? Oh my god, why? No L, just file number. Oh, rip. Also, I just closed the shell on accident. I meant to just uh, minimize it. I'm a genius. 
Yep. Oh man. Okay. Kernel bin kernel dot l. No debugging symbols. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. We're gonna try it one more time. Six hundred and eighteen. Nope. Rip. So we I'd have to compile it in debug mode, which means I have to reconfigure CMake. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Okie doke. Okie doke. Make build type. Is that what it is? Libc at least should be in debug mode. Yep. Okay. Okay. <sighs> we made it. It's not going to help me. Isn't there a way to see the context, like the lines? I, I do not use GDB enough. I, I, layout source. Well, I'm pretty sure this won't work. Uh, thanks, though. Stat. Running the program, obscure, internal, specifying, okay. Can I just list? Oh, it's list. That doesn't help. Damn it. <laughs> I swear I, I would type like a four letter word, like line or list, and it would print out the 10 lines of code around where it's broken. What is that? I know disassemble. How do I get the context? Layout assembly for Sir Aid, it won't work, I promise. This is, you can't just do that. No fancy layouts. So it says, by the way, uh, I guess I'm gonna look it up. Is there a flag to make Qumi stop when it triple faults? Yep, there is. I don't know what it is though. Because the restarting is kind of annoying. <laughs> That's what a real computer would do, is why it does that. There's, they really make it difficult for you, don't they? I'd love to just print out, like, the context. I don't want to inspect an address or print out an address. I just want to see the fucking code. God damn it. <laughs> Google GDB C code context. I don't care about split view. <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate I hate Google so much. This is where we're at right now. <laughs> so just breakpoint. There's no way to view the goddamn source code. 
You're not even using Google. The search engine. Jesus Christ. You want me to use Google? It's not like it'll be better. It's worse. <laughs> Wanna see it? We'll do it. Here, I'll do this. Yeet. GDB. Show code context. Okay. Top link by Google. List line num. List. List minus. So it says just type list, right? That's what I would intuit from that. I'd go, oh, list with nothing just means print lines. Like, do I print dot? Print the lines just before? <laughs> what do I do? Info line, line spec. Info line. So it says, okay, so the problem is in libc finny somewhere. Everything before that works. Assuming you just to puts. What? Okay. Doesn't libc finny do like nothing? I mean, it closes, use close all, right? Why am I here? Okay, so we have no way to see the source code. That's wonderful. That's, yeah, so helpful. Very good. Calls global destructors. That includes destructors of static variables in C++. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we just step blindly. Oh good, no such directory as debug.cpp. That's good. I'm glad that it doesn't exist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep, so now we're stepping through to uart.cpp. Not sure why none of this is uh, able to be found. Cannot access memory at address. Wonderful. We're all the way down to in8 now, in io.cpp. We're back into uart. Back into io.cpp. Printing stuff out, I'm sure. Hey, look, you can probably see it print out on the right side. I should have hit N instead of S. We'll get there. It's fine. Just looking for case stage one when we get back there. There we go. There's the new line. Here we go. Case stage one, we're back. And we're right back into debug. Because not enough time is going by. So we haven't actually switched in the scheduler yet. And at some point, the scheduler is going to be like, hey, you're now doing something else. Now we just have to wait for that, which is may take a different amount of time. I should have hit N instead of S. Famous last words. You see, they say interrupts enable. I don't see anything enabled. No interrupts have been happening. So it says red array two time, Lumao. Hmm. 
Now we're printing out the entire Lenser OS thing. We're just still in the kernel process. We haven't left the kernel process. We have not entered user space for some reason. Either not enough time has gone by because of how often we're pausing. I don't honestly know. We'll get there. Because the scheduler is supposed to have already switched us every time an interrupt happens, but it's like interrupts aren't happening. We're just following the one. No interrupt has ever happened, so we're not running anything. <laughs> I don't know why it has some consequence of GDB and QEMU working together, but the, they no longer work. Serade says, okay, so the problem is somewhere in the Finney array. Let's hope that that's correct, because it doesn't look like GDB is going to help us. Uh, where are we at? So it says, okay, never mind. It's not in the Finney array. Rip. Well, I have no hope for you. Hopefully you fix it soon. It was just closing standard out, so I wasn't seeing any more output. It's after that. Lol. Wonderful. Let's implement and in the text editor. How about that? Let's do something I know I can do so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> oh man. You don't know. I have a I have a text editor I'm working on. Jesus Christ, look at that. CMake. Little build. Cannot type. <laughs> and build light. Oh, it doesn't work. Wonderful. Do I have to do build light.exe? Oh, it's not in build. It's in bin. Lol. Okay, so the problem is CXA finalize. I'm glad you know how to fix this, Serade, because I don't. Oh, yeah, this is the text editor. And uh, it's pretty good, I'd say. I like it. And uh, I recently just implemented a few things, most notably OR. So you can evaluate the current line that the cursor is on with Alt E. You can see at the bottom it returns 69. It just returns the first non-nil uh, thing. So if we put zero here, zero is non-nil, confusingly enough, then you can run it. And you can see, ah, symbol not bound, OX, because I keep typing an X there. But you can see it returns zero, or whatever's here, like a string. Pretty cool. I implemented OR. How about that? How about that? And I also implemented scrolling. It's not really good yet, but you can now scroll down and up. No? So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then you can also just switch into light mode and dark mode by setting GUI property colors. And very soon, I'm going to work on a syntax highlighter that works with these same uh, commands and is actually able to handle syntax highlighting of programming languages. How about that? The same way that we color the text, we are going to color the code. But yeah, I just implemented OR which can take any amount of arguments, and any arguments past the one evaluated aren't evaluated. So for example, error here would actually cause a, uh, a problem. But because 69 comes first, you can see that 
it actually saves the error from ever being evaluated. So it says, so you remember how I said that I wasn't using function pointers? Well, I'm not, but the compiler slash ABI is, and CXA finalized specifically, because that runs at exit functions. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we're trying to run an ad, a null ad exit. Interesting. I should probably have better protections in the kernel against jumping straight to the, uh, <laughs> null putter, you know, just with memory mapping, but I'm pretty sure I already do that where null page is non-executable. I don't know. We'll see, and yeah, this should probably not triple fault the entire OS, lol. Well, I mean, you're right, but if you can figure out how, <laughs> that'd be great. No, I can figure it out as well. It's just going to take me some time. All of these are built-ins, which are basically C code that you can run from Lisp in the text editor. There's a lot of them. For example, this is how the clipboard is implemented. This is how scrolling is implemented. This is how... The GUI property colors and positions and stuff is implemented. How about that? What we're going to do is implement not a built-in. I know, P Pikachu shocked face. We're going to implement in a, a special form, which is basically like a compiler built-in, right? So the compiler will handle these at an earlier time than the actual built-ins would be called because built-ins are called uh, basically here. No more arguments left to evaluate apply operator, which basically just means call it. And apply handles the built-ins. How about that? How about that? So now in evaluate expression, we have all these bips and bops like define, set, quote, lambda, error, while, progin, macro, Evaluate environment and or and here's how it works. Basically, we are in a big loop and we are doing this loop while there are no errors. But here's the thing: if nil p stack break, so if there is if there's no stack, we stop the loop at this point. Which means that if we don't create a stack, it's just set to nil by default up here somewhere. Stack equals nil. So if we do nothing in our handling, then as in don't create a stack, then that means we'll just exit and evaluation will stop. So in or, we actually want evaluation to continue until there are no more arguments. So we create a stack frame and then evaluate the first argument which if it's nil, we'll just return nil and everything works out. We'll end up at our, uh, our stack handler, which is why we list that stack operator. Okay, so the first thing that's called in CXA finalize is crashing and it's not a null function pointer. Interesting. What is it? <laughs> what ad exit are we calling? Sorade says, the way you do built-ins screams this should be a macro. You're correct. Terrific table 55. Does the null pointer point to something because it's a pointer? And if yes, what is it pointing to? Null. It's a null pointer. It points to null. Zero. Address is zero, 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 zero. Terrific table 55. Hopefully that helps. Sorade says, well, that's what I'm trying to find out right now. Again, radare two time. Oh my. Terrific table says, oh, makes sense. E. Okay, so here's or, where we create a stack. We set the operator, which is or, in the stack, which just means that when we handle the stack, we can tell that or is the operator that made it. And then we say expression equals car arguments continue, which means that our first argument, we evaluate before uh, getting to the stack handler. And is going to be very similar. By the way, the reason these are special forms is so we can implement short circuit evaluation where we can stop uh, stop evaluating as soon as we get to the 
a member that tells us the answer. So in this same vein, and is going to make a stack frame with the current arguments as a tail, the environment and stack stored in it. We're going to have list set, which is basically going to set the second index in the stack, so 0, 1, 2, to the operator. This will just let us keep track of it in the stack list. And then expression equals car arguments continue. So we'll evaluate the first and. And now we can go handle and up in evaluate return value, which if you remember, at the bottom, if nil p stack break, but if stack is not nil, okay, we created a stack like we did, then we'll say, okay, if there's been no errors, then just evaluate the return value. So now we get to go to evaluate return value and handle stuff there. It's right here. And uh, we get some stuff out of the stack, which is quite important. And arguments is uninitialized because you're meant to initialize it if you need it. Because some things don't need arguments. So here you can see the or implementation. And we're just going to pop a new one in here, basically. Uh, screw that up a little bit. And we're going to say another string compare, but this time with and. How about that? Thread says, it seems the problem might be in the destructor of sparse vector. Hey, that's something I understand again. <laughs> I feel not so dumb. I'm going to go look at that. Where is sparse vector? Is that an extension? That is an extension. Okay. So sparse vector destructor. Oh no. I forget you can put static asserts not in code and it freaks me out. It seems the destructor is defaulted. Real cougars? Oh no, that's not good. The, the default. So we have iterator reference. So it's in the destructor of standard vector. Oh my. Which is it being the default destructor is fine. Okay. I didn't know if there was different stuff to do in a sparse vector. But I guess it's just freeing memory. Delete array putter. Now we're getting somewhere. What is delete array? Why do we have delete array? Okay. So, yes, C++ mode, please. So it's this one. Where is that implemented? In libc, right? That's where the it would be going to standard lib what is it what did i just why am i where are these actually defined is the thing the default destructor calls the destructors of all members oh i didn't know that that's actually pog that makes sense though that's kind of how c plus plus works i forget things i'm in the wrong place So we never got to allocate block. I can just remove that. Sorry, it said, all right. Oh, eyes emoji. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm attentive. Attentive? Attentive. So it calls free putter. The delete in the destructor of the second vector is failing somehow. So if the pointer is null, do nothing. Find the block in the allocated list. Yes, it is the most recently allocated block. Just decrement the heap putter. Yeah, that's tough. That would be tough. You'd have to check. Yeah, don't worry about that. 
Make sure we have a valid putter. Okay, otherwise remove the block from the allocated list. If block prev, block prev next equals block next. If block next, block next prev equals block prev. Which works even if those are null. Block next equals free list, free list, free list. Okay. So the bug is probably in free. Yeah, if I come out, out the delete, it works. Interesting. So find alloc block would be my guess. Where is that? Why is why are these not in the same spot, by the way? Block equals alloc list, while block, if block putter equals putter, return block, block equals block next. While block, if block putter equals putter return block, block equals block next. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see how that could be screwed up. Because we have a while block before it's dereferenced. I don't see how we could jump, so it's probably back in free somewhere else. Find alloc block is fine, it's after that apparently. I guess. libc assert. Could this be null? Could this somehow be null? Could assert abort message. Sorry, it says nope. It really can't. Okay. I just I I didn't recognize it and I wanted to check. I was like, if we're jumping into like that, it, it could just be bad. If not block, head equals free list. While head. Head equals free list. What is free list? I've only seen alloc list. It's somewhere in the last three lines. Okay, block next equals free list. If block. We're already dereferencing block. So we, we are saying... Okay. Could we be returning from libc assert? Block next equals free list is crashing somehow. Could we be returning from libc assert and then we're dereferencing null over and over? Sorry, it says nope. Okay. Block next equals free list. If free list previous. What is this doing? Add it to the free list. So this is saying block is now the head of the free list. Doesn't that mean this doesn't make any sense? Because block next equals free list. How would... Oh, free list is... Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. Because free list currently refers to the head, the old head. So the old head previous does need to be set to block for the doubly linked list, and then the, the new head can be updated. So it says, nope, it would print a message. I hate linked lists. <laughs> I love them. I love them. I mean, this looks like the classic add to the head. You know what I mean? Also, we can just... I'm just gonna... Continue over here. <laughs> Arguments equals list underscore get. What do we get? Uh, we're going to get it off the stack because this is where the tail is stored in the third index. And then we can say if nil p result. So if result is nil of whatever we just evaluated, right? Then we can just return OK. But we can't just return OK, because that leaves the stack in place. So we actually have to kill our stack. In this, this is a completely separate thing, I know. I'm just getting it done before I forget. Uh -huh. And this is just going to equal the parent stack, which is stored right in the first element, which we can access with car. And then we can say, if there are no more, then return OK. We can literally just copy that. So if nil p could or arguments, 
And then otherwise, we're gonna, yeah, this works almost verbatim, except for that one check. How cool is that? This check. Uh, basically, we then say, okay, the next argument, we're going to evaluate that after we return because we don't clear the stack, which means we're going to loop. And then list set stack three could or arguments. This updates the arguments for next time so that the next argument, quote unquote, will always refer to the next one. And then that should be it. That should be and implemented in the text editor. So there's a problem with the free list, it seems. Yes. Back to the OS. Free list equals null putter. Sus. Okay. If free list equals free putter. Free list equals free putter next. That's fine. Head equals free list while head head putter. Block next equals free list if free list free list prev equals block. Hmm. So what is an alloc header? Uh, it's four pointers. It works on Linux, so somehow that code is crashing only in Lenser OS. Alloc header stores the putter and size of an allocation. Putter, size, and also next pre. So pre list seems like, okay, so if it's set to null putter, block next equals null putter, if null putter, no. So why would block next equal null putter crash? That makes no sense. Never mind, it does crash on Linux. Well, that makes this much easier. Hey. <laughs> Hallelur. Okay, we're going to work on the text editor. Does this still work? Uh, I have to run it like that. Well, it ran. That means it didn't, didn't go too bad. Okay. So, one, two. It returned two. Okay, that worked. And then if this is nil, it returned nil. How about that? So this either returns the last element or it returns nil, if any of them are nil. We can test for this short circuit optimization, just like that. You can see it still returns nil and no error happens. Whereas if we were to just try and do error, it's like, um, but that doesn't work. How about that? Our text editor it's beginning to work. This conditional stuff means that we will be able to implement a, uh, we will be able to implement a syntax highlighter much easier because we can say, if you find, just keep calling the functions with the different keywords. So like search forward for this keyword or this keyword or this keyword or this keyword. And the first one that isn't nil, we'll, we can return its length or something like that. And then we can just have one expression to get the uh, position and length of a keyword, for example. And then we can set its color with a GUI property and move on. Looking good, looking good. All right, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> so it says time to use a proper debugger a hey. <laughs> also i'm on linux restful toad valbus and get dizzy four thank you all so much for the follow i completely missed it all so maybe it's not right here maybe it's somewhere after here after we're trying to use free list elsewhere and it's not correct So is there any other way that free list, whoa, free list gets 
set. Free list, if we're freeing the putter, So find free block gets us a pointer to a block. So we say if that's at the beginning of the free list, add the block to the allocated list after removing it. So if free putter creve, creve next equals next. If free putter next, next creve equals creve. At tracks and then update the head if you need to. Add the block to the allocated list. Free putter next, alloc list. If alloc list, alloc looks, alloc list prev equals free putter, alloc list equals free putter. I mean, that's, that's the proper pattern. So we're adding to it properly. We return the putter. I'm excited to see what the actual problem is. While we're doing that, <laughs> Serade says, oh, I see. Uh-oh. So that didn't work. I got to figure out why that didn't work. It's fine, though. Libc assert is crashing. Block is null. I knew it. I knew it was Libc assert. <laughs> Libc assert isn't null, though. I was wrong there. Also, Zaros, Zarios, thank you so much for the follow one minute ago. I actually caught it this time. Let's add and and or. All right, time to go back to using write. <laughs> what is libc assert? Why is it crashing? All this is unneeded stuff, just testing. Same with all that. So we now have or and and implemented. How about that? We could add a test for them. Mm, okay. Let's do basic tests. Let's do logic.lt. And let's do, how do I write these again? That's right, single semicolon and then the result that it should print out. So, oh, this is not correct. Thank you. So I would like to print or nil 69 and expect 69. Ho ho, how about that? I would like to print oops, and nil 69 and expect pretty sure it's nil and then and thirty two just anything non nil And then we can test four as well with four twenty sixty nine, which should return four twenty. Oops. There we go. Control X plus is much harder to hit now. So we should have 69, 420, nil, and 69. That's how we like it. Okay. Sarad says it uses standard IO after it has been freed. For some reason, it didn't occur to me that that might be a problem, lol. I was only, I was only going to use it if standard IO is still initialized, but I forgot to check for that, lol. Do you think the changes are like pull request worthy or do you think I can just go make them? That should be a proper test. We should probably test that it runs though. Sorade says that's not the problem. What? <laughs> Libc assert is crashing. I 
I see. I see what you're saying. Zarya says, what do you use for Git text user interface? I use Maggot. It's part of Emacs. It's one of the best Git porcelains, at least one of the ones that you'll see recommended the most. Uh... Yeah, sorry, it says, but why the fuck is it calling that? It calls that if an assertion fails and the actual problem is that block is null putter somehow. I see what you're saying. I, I understood at the at the last one, but that is much more clear now. Uh, it passes. So we wrote a passing test. That's good. And we can probably close stuff like this. And go back. Zarya says Emacs, Soski. Listen, Emacs is so good. If you don't think so, I would question why. I agree it's not good for everybody, but it is good. What did I just change? I need to test. Okay. So we have our test, we have our or and and, we have deactivate, we are good. Let's make a commit to commit and say new special forms or and and these allow for short circuit evaluation of any amount of conditions this is incredibly useful in many scenarios i don't know why i say this stuff to myself uh, now we can just push to Codeberg, push to GitHub, and that's all updated. We updated the, the text editor. How about that? How about that? So how is block null putter? What was it in? In free, right? So in free, we have ellipsia cert hitting. So it is find alloc block. <laughs> now it could be here. So if not block, invalid pointer or double free. So I'm assuming you're already doing this, Sarai. If you fix these to use write syscall instead, then they will print and we'll be able to see which one. I'm getting invalid pointer. So it says I am. He already knows what I'm saying. Okay, legendary. You're the best. So we're getting through all of this. So we look through the entire free list. Oh, wait, should this be alloc list? We're trying to free an allocated pointer, right? No? Free list refers to stuff that has already been freed. But right now I'm implementing something that prints the pointer. Legendary. I can push the libc assert fix real quick if you'd like. Um, I'm good. I think I'm, I'm okay staying at the conceptual level. The abstract. So. Also, I'm wrong about that. Okay. So the free list, what does it contain? Ah, I see. This is checking for a double free. If we're in the if not block, that means find alloc block already failed. So we're checking if we're double freeing. Otherwise, it's always an invalid pointer. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Thank you so much for being so patient, Sir Aid. I am not always easy to uh, explain things to. <laughs> I understand. There's no way this could be wrong. Find alloc block. So we just are freeing something that doesn't exist. I don't think this is wrong. I really don't. Reading the comments explains the code. <laughs> With a tongue out face. Yeah. Yeah. 
find a block in the allocated list. I think that would work. Keep track of the last freed block, keep track of the last allocated block. I mean, this is really just keeping track of allocated blocks, but the head points to the last allocated block. I get what you're saying. So find alloc block looks through all of the... Yeah, that doesn't seem too insane. It looks very reasonable. So here's realloc. Realloc's fine. Free is screwed up, though. Because... So what putter are we actually failing on? Oh god. So, oh, yep, I was off on my right hand. Split keyboards are glorious, by the way. I don't know if I've talked about it. Do you hear the new keyboard? It's incredible. Everyone in the Discord is tired of hearing about it. Sir Aid says the second vector. But right now I'm trying to print all the pointers. Bless. Okay. Okay. So we're in the heap. There's allocated blocks. We're not looking for a null putter, but the pointer we're given is wrong. And it's from an add exit call, which is like from libc init or whatever, right? No? libc finny? It's gotta be somewhere. But we're trying to free the vector, the second vector. That's right. So the vector Well, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do here. It's trying to delete putter. What is putter? Putter equals other putter for copy assignment. Putter equals new value type. Okay. That's it's confusing, but it's it's fine. So we use the new array unless we're copying it or the moving it, I should say. To do crash horribly. I like that. Um, putter equals new putter here. What is new putter? It equals a new value type. And then we say move into new putter, standard move putter at i. Okay. Shrink to fit. We should probably. There's definitely a race condition in here, but it's fine. It's not a big deal right now. Because a race condition within one program will only be a problem once we implement threads. And uh, we're definitely not there. So we're not really setting pointer all that often.
I mean, we're just calling new. We say other putter equals null putter. But if it's null putter, then free does nothing. So it's fine. Number right here. It's a confusing one. I will I will admit that. How would how would it be something that isn't a pointer? Other than you know what I mean? It's gotta be something. Equals 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 putter equals putter plus n. That's the iterator putter. Putter equals other putter. Putter equals end. Other putter equals null putter. Putter. It's other putter. I mean, it's the same thing here. We're not really setting it. This is a confusing problem. It's definitely a confusing problem. So find alloc block. Basically, we're getting here. Okay. Okay. I see it. I also am confused, but I also see it. This is driving me a little crazy, by the way. I know. I know it doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, that was getting me a little bit. I know this is just going to go away as soon as I merge the next changes that actually fix all this crap, but that's fine. Why is it not working? Am I in symbols? No. Hmm. There we go. Me. Sorade says, aha, it is a double free. Oh no. It is. It's freeing the memory, then malloc allocates that again, and then we're freeing it again. <laughs> so it has to do with your free list implementation. It's not a double free, but it thinks that it is. So it says no, it's not a double. What? an invalid pointer? We're allocating it, then freeing it. Then allocating it, then freeing it. Yeah, I understood you. That's fine. That is fine, but it thinks it's a double free, right? That's the issue. You're saying it is a double free error, but the free problem is just because it thinks it's one. No, so we're still getting invalid footer. <laughs> Neither is it a double free, nor does it think it is. Okay. Why'd you say it is a double free then? Did you mean to say it isn't up above? That's the only thing that was confusing me. I'm like, so it is technically a double free? Because you put emphasis around is. Sorry, it says I was wrong. Gotcha, gotcha. That's why I said, oh, no, actually, rip. Yeah, I missed that. Oh, yeah, it's literally the message right after it. You got to read all the messages. You got to not send 30 in a row, bud. <laughs> like, what? how am I supposed to read all of these? They're, it was up here. I already scrolled up to read it because I knew I missed stuff. <laughs> No, I'm joking. It was like here. I just didn't read it. I'm just messing with you. Why? It, oh, it thinks this is assembler. I was like, why are semicolons not acting correctly? 
Swade says, I'm sorry, but in all fairness, Twitch chat isn't exactly the best medium for this. Well, that's a good point. Hey, that looks cleaner. A little more syntax highlighty. Still doesn't help. So, uh, we're freeing, allocating, freeing, allocating, and somehow we're returning null putter. So when we allocate in malloc, we find a free block. Alloc list is updated to free putter. It seems like if it's removed from free putter, And if we add it to alloc, then everything should be like it was, but obviously it isn't like it do be, or how it should. So, how can we <laughs> solve this? Alloc list prev equals free putter. Alloc list equals free putter. So we just doubly link list it up. Okay, so we're getting closer to figuring it out. Very much closer. Gotta plug in my phone. Okay. So when we find a free block of bytes, I know I'm really getting into the weeds now. We say, look through the free list. If block size is big enough, return block. So after we find a free block, Where were we? I should have gone over here. In the other window. So when we allocate or mallocate or whatevs, we say bytes equals aligned of 16, find free block of that size, remove it from the free list. This is why I hate memory allocators, huh? You <laughs> They're not that bad. They're just complicated. Free list equals free putter. So free list is like our list of freed things. If we have a putter, free putter, that means that it came from the free list. Update the previous next and the next prev. So the one before it, and the one after it thinks the one before it is the one before this. The one before it, after it, thinks it's the one after this. So we just remove it. That's correct. This is all correct. Time to dump the free alloc list after each allocation. That's what I was just thinking. Like, you're literally just going to have to see which allocation screws it up. Because it, I literally, it looks all correct. Heap putter bytes plus block size is greater than heap base. No mem. Allocate header. Uh... Wait a sec. Okay, so we do check head putter. Did we ever actually, okay. What is heap putter? So that's probably the actual pointer where we have stuff allocated up until. Add the block to the allocated list. Putter equals putter. Block equals the wherever the header ends up. Block putter, block size, block next, alloc list. Oh, 
why does this look different? Because we're not removing anything, we're adding. Turn the pointer to the allocated memory. Hmm. So, footer, we allocate with heap alloc. Why do we do a different thing with allocate header? What does this do? Where do we put headers? I just am going to figure this out. If free headers, alloc header, header equals free headers, free headers equals header next, return header. Okay. So this header could still have like information in it because we don't do any clearing out of what it used to be which makes sense because it's still the same size header and everything at the same address. So it wouldn't really make sense to clear anything out. Which means... That's realloc. That's why I'm confused. I'm just going to close that. And do something like this. Let's have this looking at malloc and this looking up above. Block size equals align to max align t size of malloc header. Okay, that should be fine. The block size member is set to bytes. The block next alloc list uh, block. So when you create a new one, when free putter is non, when free putter is null, allocate memory for the block allocate the memory, you return putter. This is what should be passed to free, unless the thing that's calling malloc or free is incorrect. Calling free with an invalid pointer. But you said we're allocating it, freeing it, allocating it, freeing it. So if we allocate it, we'll return putter, we'll free it, in which we will say, find it here, in the alloc block, and then we will, since we find it, remove the block from the alloc list and add it to the free list. So this is the same pattern that we saw up above. What about, oh, wait, 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 Sir Aid. Don't you have to check the head? If block is equal to alloc list, And then you have to, so it says no, okay. Remove the block from the allocated list. Look 10 lines before that. Find alloc block putter? What do you mean? So it says, or wait. <laughs> what are you talking about? 10 lines before it, 378. That's never run, that's not block. Bud. Right? I thought you wanted to check if block is not null, but that's not it. Say that again, bud. <laughs> so above, here's my, here, I'll stay here. This is what we're talking about on the right. But in malloc, right? Where's malloc? In malloc, when you remove a block from the, a doubly linked list, you must check that the head of the list is not the thing you're removing. But if it is, then you have to update the free list to actually to actually be the next thing, nah? <laughs> Sarade says, ah, goddammit. As I said, I hate linked lists. And I love them. I'm so happy I found that. I, I feel so proud. I do. Can I get a pat on the back? <laughs> Maybe a pat on the head, even. It's a little condescending, but I'd take it. <laughs> so 
where it says copilot even suggests that exact line. Legally, I don't think you can use copilot code in Lenser OS because of GPLv3, right? So Raid says, oh yeah, now it works. Lit! <laughs> Fuck yeah. What's that change with the libc assert? Where do I do that? Or do you think, do you want to make a pull request and I just merge that real quick? Or do you want me to just make it and commit it? Valibus says probably links are easier if you write some macros to deal with them instead of copy paste code. <laughs> if you think macros make things easier to debug and deal with, Valbus, I sincerely question your methods. Serait says, I'm going to open a PR real quick. All right, all right. I'll stash everything I got in prep. What changes did I make? Yeah, definitely get rid of that. That's incorrect. That's probably correct, but it's not important. I feel like I got rid of a bunch of tabs here. I think Emacs just got rid of tabs, if, if is what I would guess. <laughs> this is why that all looks the same. Val uh, Sir Aid says, linked lists are only used here only because I can't use vector. Yeah, try and... <laughs> Sir Aid says, yeah, the thing is, I had to use Emacs to edit format. <laughs> Because Clang D would crash in Sea Lion. Lamau. Yeah, I didn't have problems with format. I was expecting it, but uh it didn't go it didn't go badly. So we are good. I can just get rid of all these. They're really not needed. We definitely can, can we can the pull request also get rid of F diagnostics color equals always? Sea Lion has its own fork of Clang D. Why? <laughs> Sorry, it says fine. Thank you so much. That's amazing. I appreciate that. It's just so that imagine somebody who doesn't know what those color codes are. Just is what I'm trying to picture. Like imagine you don't know what those escape sequences are. And then you're like, you're met with errors that look like slash zero three three semicolon 37. <laughs> it's like, uh, maybe I'll give up. That looks hard. You know what I mean? And when it's already something as hard as like <laughs> compiling and building an OS on a on your own machine, then it's like you want to make sure you make it uh, as least confusing as possible. That's at least my the method to my madness. I know it's kind of insane to say like we don't want diagnostics colors. It's kind of ridiculous, right? But Sarade says, you know what? Also, actually, he said, you know what? I'm going to add a CMake variable. That's that's perfectly okay. Use diagnostic colors. That's beautiful. I like it. Then you can just use a generator expression in here with bool. That sounds good. That sounds good to me. I'm so glad we fixed it. That feels good. Let's go check out the... Uh... <laughs> I love that I just, <laughs> I went to the text editor. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to pass some time. I'm going to implement and. <laughs> it's actually pretty pog that we implemented that. I was waiting to do that. Uh, not waiting to do that. I just had to go to bed last night. I was so goddamn tired. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, probably on the branch still. It's not committed. It's okay. I'll wait in the pull requests. Until then, hey, you want to check out that text editor again? Uh. <laughs> or the compiler. Also, I feel so bad. Sraid says, bold of you to assume I know how generator expressions work. <laughs> They're so confusing. Okay, let's just, let's take some time and view that. Because it's worth it. <laughs> CMake generator expressions. I still don't know how to print out goddamn machine source code from GDB. I can't believe I forgot. I literally just forgot. I'm like, I don't know how to print stuff out anymore. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> Oh, probably because I am an idiot. That would probably be the issue.
Debugging and already running, killing the child process, multiple threads, stopping, continuing, examining, examining source files. Okay. We literally, that's where we were. It just says list. <laughs> okay. And CMake generator expressions, if you don't know, are this, this thing right here. <laughs> it's so readable and easy to use, right? Look at that. Everyone can tell that this would say, oh, you have an old compiler if you have version less than 4.2.0 of your C++ compiler. Look at that. <laughs> clearly, clearly readable. I mean, what wouldn't be readable about this code? You know what I mean? It's just, it's so clear and so uh, intuitive. Like, you know, it'd be... <laughs> oh no, there's different delimiters based on if the path has spaces or not. <laughs> Oh my. Using variables to build up more complex generator expression is also a good way to reduce errors and improve readability. <laughs> They're like, maybe just turn it into, you know, 40 lines instead of one and it would look better. <laughs> Sorry, it says improve readability. Yeah, I know, right? What readability to it? There is no readability to improve. A common mistake is to try to split a gen expression across multiple lines with indenting. Oh yeah, why would that work? Again, use helper variables with well-chosen names. <laughs> yeah, why would this work? Why, why would indenting in new lines, you know? Why would that not be okay? It's not like they already are parsing an entire programming language. They could, I mean, it's not like they could just skip white space. <laughs> Sir Aid says, CMake is a mistake, honestly. It's like bash, but 10 times worse. Then make something that's 10 times better. <laughs> you know what I mean? How, what, how do you make CMake better? I understand the decisions don't make sense. Like, why would you use this syntax? Why is this not allowed? But I'm sure there's actually deep reasons underneath. The people who make CMake aren't just like, because. <laughs> They're not Windows, you know what I mean? And Bash isn't that bad. I know when you have to say it's not that bad, it is that bad, but Bash isn't that bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can use this as a gen expression. I'm not just talking about this. I'm talking about the entire syntax of the language. You know you've messed up if Perl has a better syntax. What's wrong with CMake? Syntax. I mean, it's not good. But it's not like, oh my god, ew. Because what the fuck is if and end if? Have you not? It's I mean, it's better than if and phi. What in the world is that? I mean, I grew up writing programs like that. <laughs> That's not unnatural to me. That's very natural. Why are there parentheses? Because to group things together and to be able to call things with arguments. Can you imagine what this would look like without parentheses? It'd be even worse, dog. <laughs> Just use braces. See, that's just a, that's a nothing complaint. Then make a preprocessor for CMake that just converts all braces to parentheses. You never use braces, so just use them. And then make a process that changes it before it calls CMake with the changed file. That's actually not a bad idea. Totally doable. <laughs> It'd be pretty easy. I gotta update all these, oh God. Was I at least sensible and I keep... How do I run QEMU? I do. I did keep it all in one place with QEMU flags. Wonderful. Yeah, so I can just change memory here. Dope. At least on Windows. We'll get there. 
This is commented out. That's fine. Make a build system that generates the build system and use that instead. <laughs> so it says, since this, oh, okay. Since this approach seems to be working so, so well, let's apply it again. If your build system sucks, make a build system that generates the build system and use that instead. You're not wrong. That's what make is. That's literally what CMake is. They're like, I don't want to run all these commands and keep track of them and change them. And it's like, what if we just wrote a programming language to make those for us? And then CMake is getting to that point again. And it's like, ah, let's just make a programming language and let have it do it for us. Lamau. There is so much Discord I have to check. Oh my. <laughs> that may be the issue. <laughs> you haven't updated. Did you know that VS Code shows you some ports open on remote devices? What? Class struggle is, is inevitable in OOP, Karl Marx. Are you kidding me? Conversion from long unsigned int to long unsigned int 63 may change value. What? <laughs> oh no. What is that? Is that a bit field? I just got the most stupid warning I've seen in a while. It's like, hey, this 64 bit number may change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a 63-bit bit field. But it's unsigned. I mean, it that... When would this be? I don't get it. So the W conversion warnings, I feel like, are way too broad. They talk about way too much stuff. Also, I kaba to copy-paste. Also, floating point is meant to be a hyphen. What is kaba? Siba. I can't, can't. I don't know. I like W conversion, but this is a bit much. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, there's so much I have to catch up on. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I'll get there. In any case, we should be doing good. We should be doing good. And Kumu for arch creating targets. So this CMake is good. I wonder if I should just start writing the top level C name. Do we have a, a PR? Not yet. All good. But yeah, CMake has the worst generator expressions in the world. Look at all this Objective C crap. Objective C forces you to just handle it spe specifically, though. It sucks. Insanity. Sarade says, I'm almost done. Nice. No worries. No worries. I uh, should get going here. I still have to feed my cat. It's probably important. I mean, they already ate, but feed him again. Uh huh. Oh no. <laughs> Amazing. I wonder what's the most cursed generator expression we could make. Like, could we make a generator expression that, like, generates the entire CMake file? <laughs> Lamau. Why? Oh no. Oh no. Serade says, are they Turing complete? Yes, they are. Here's another reason why. Gen X eval. You can literally, within a generator expression, evaluate another generator expression. You could probably implement Lisp like this. This is insanity. 
Look at all these funny little, funny little ones. CMake Lisp go burr. Forget temp Lisp. Template Lisp is legible compared to this. It's true. All the dollar signs. Oh man. What? There is some complicated stuff. Oh my, Apple really makes things complicated. <laughs> the suspense. Also, you know what I figured out the other day? Whoops. Spoilers. You know what I figured out the other day? Emacs has the Game of Life built in, Conway's Game of Life. You wouldn't expect that, would you? <laughs> Emacs always surprises. Oh, I, I screwed it up. Don't press things. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching a TIE fighter explode. Very cool. This is a cool pattern. The two blocks, the two columns. I don't know why all these red dots are here. Question mark, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> oh, running low. Oh my. This is very cool. Also, if you haven't already, this is a bit of a lull, but uh We'll be getting right back to it. Be sure to check out the YouTube links down below. You can check out all of my broadcasts and previous broadcasts. Uh, I guess those are the same thing, though. Truthfully. So, uh, I would also like to recommend uh, the YouTube because that's where I post my uh, community things. All right, done. I've opened the PR. Legendary. That's where I post my community things, so what should the next stream be about? You can answer here and I won't listen to you, as usual. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I will. But uh, it didn't work out like this. Uh, pull requests. Took a bit because I had to clean up some stuff. I'm looking at light. I'm a genius. Fix bug and free. <laughs> One commit. 11 files changed. Amazing. Also, shout out Al Alberto Vadagna for the for the new sub on YouTube. Shout outs to use. <laughs> you get a special shout out. Uh, okay, what do we got? <laughs> Wait a second. Do we actually need more memory? Make sure to check it and do something stupid, lol. I will. <laughs> do we actually need more memory? Can we keep it at 100? Defer executes dot 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 at the end of the current block. Oh my. So it says I allocated more when I was testing. So we'd still have to test it with less. 100 is probably enough, but just in case. I'll see if we can reduce it on my machine. And then I'll just commit the reduction. We have W conversion ignorer. That's fine. Result plus equals char zero plus i ten. That looks correct because this is 
going to be 0 through 9. So this is going to be 0 through 9 as a character. Defer foo runs foo at the end of the block. It does, I just didn't expect to see it in our standard lab. <laughs> our standard lib. It's cool that we have that. Here's the, uh, the new option in CMake lists. You didn't use option, which I find hilarious. <laughs> Hold on. It's fine. Sorry, it says option. Yeah, so this makes it where it shows up in the GUI. Provide a Boolean option that the user can select. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. But if you use the... Uh, Oh god, what have I done? Leaked. I don't trust this. What is this? That's why I opened it. It opened into nothing. Hopefully that uh, that that was a uh, a virus. Hopefully that was what that was. No, but there's a CMake GUI. Maybe it's CMake dash GUI. I don't know. But it makes the option apply there. And uh, you can see it. There's even a help string, I think. Stuff like that. It doesn't matter. This is fine. Because that means you can just do the same thing. Dash D, use diagnostic scholar. And also, I think we should say if defined or something like that. Again, not important in this PR. But if just doing this, I think if you set it to zero, it would still, it would be like, nah. So it says, yeah, right. Something like that. I think this just moved to a single line, no? Yeah, that just moved to a single line. Standard IO destructed. <laughs> we we check now whether standard IO has been destructed or not. That's a good thing. Right and right putter. Standard to string. Right OX blah blah blah. Right right putter. Dump list. A standard IO destructed. Use F puts if you can, otherwise use write and just do something very simple. That makes a lot of sense. So it says, yeah, I prefer putting it in one line. That is all cool. A <laughs> the fix. I was making sure it was here. Extern bool standard IO destructed in standard lib.h. That should be fine. That should be fine. Well, we're going to do it. We're just going to rebase and fast forward. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have too much fun. Uh, so it's G, fetch all, pull. I'm probably going to have to uh, stage all this crap. Okay. Crap. Perfect. Now we can pull from origin main. Yeet. Okay, we have it. Just do get reset hard head. Oh god. I mean, if I was at the command line, I would. It's harder to do in Maggot. They make you really fight to do a hard reset, which is good. Unless there's something you want to keep, of course. Uh, no. I just want to remember what I changed in case I accidentally get rid of something and it doesn't work. It's a habit, mainly. It's not really important. Uh, where are we at? Okay, run CMake. And run CMake to build build into a hard drive, a GUID partition table hard drive. And then run HDA, not debug. Screw that one up. I'm incorrigible <sighs> uh, 
recompile the kernel. Also, this won't fix anything. I'm hilarious. I have to recompile libc. You know, I'm a genius like that. I'm, I'm smart. <laughs> it did work. <laughs> Was that just chance? Did that actually work? Did libc get remade? Ignore those volatile warnings when you compile the kernel. That's just C++ 20 nonsense. I ignore warnings at all times. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, it's just going to be WSL CMake build. Probably that one. Okay. Now build all of the user space directories, the programs, like standard out and blaze it. So go here, here, and I think you just ran them. That looks correct. We build blaze it and then copy the executable. And then we can just do the same thing I did before and create standard out. I love Emacs. And then now when we go back to the kernel, everything should actually be rebuilt. I don't know why it worked before, before we rebuilt everything, but uh, I'm not gonna complain, I'm not gonna complain. Oh yeah. This is the one. <laughs> oh, did I do something wrong? I must have done something wrong, didn't I? <laughs> oh, that was so good. It worked, and then it didn't. <laughs> Root lib. So these are all just updated, just now. So are our includes updated just now? Our includes are also updated just now. But bits hasn't been updated. Oh, it has. It just wasn't loaded. Standard hasn't been updated. Is that still there? Shouldn't that have been moved here? Oh, wow. So I just go in and out of here and it changed? Am I insane? I don't know. I'm, I was probably in a different place. I was in root. That's right. So include bits standard. Why is that? Is that just there from long ago? Could that be breaking things? I'm just going to, okay, I need to remake my sys root, don't I? I'm going to, I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to rebuild the uh, CMake. I love that I got the same error. It's got to be me at this point, though. It's got to be me. What if I just delete root and make sys root? Is that fine? Let's look at sys root. How do I, what need? Bash root. Make dir system root. Copy base. Find all the headers and copy them into include. Oh boy. So it seems like I have old stuff, but it shouldn't matter that bit standard is there. I could make standard out a C++ program instead. I mean, I think it's fine. I'd write, uh, let's just keep it as C, but you're right. We could make it CPP and implement it using standard print. Maybe we should have like a, a C standard out and then an actual standard out, which is in C++. I see your points, though. 
So this is just updated. What did I do wrong? <laughs> God damn it. So we updated the libc. And then we updated standard out. Yep. Well, we know we didn't need it. You don't need to update the sys root. I mean, I thought I didn't, but it didn't work. The libcc make lists does that. It should do that. <laughs> I 100% agree with you that it should be working. <laughs> the fact that it doesn't... Oh, it could be that we're getting an eno mem, I guess. Also, did I see the libc assert fix? Did you fix libc assert somewhere in here? Yes, okay. Okay. So that's been fixed. Do you just need more memory? What's going on? Because I'm still running a script that has the 100 megabytes. Hmm. It works on my system with a 1,000. So how much memory do you really need? I mean, 28 extra megabytes is an insane amount at this point in the kernel. <laughs> Do we really need that much? Nine hundred extra megabytes is just insane. It doesn't work again. We'll go to a thousand. See if it's literally just that. We are running this run hda.bat, right? Yes. Hello? It's not in debug mode, is it? Did I screw something up? Run hca.bat. Nope, we're back. We made it. It just took a little bit. Uh, classic. So yeah, there's a thousand megabytes of memory. Not working. You can tell by right there. Okay. This no longer works. There's no changes that I've made. I've made, I've modified Blaze it and Standard Out apparently. Hmm. 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 I've got nothing. I I don't know. Do you know why it's not working? I don't know why it's not working. I mean, we build libc. Should I clean first? Let me clean first. We rebuilt libc. Sarade says, I don't know what you're doing. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I'm just following the instruction. So we rebuilt libc. And once we've done that, if we wanted it to take effect and actually change our user space programs, we have to recompile the user space programs, which are these little funky, bu funky bugs, right? And we're going to clean first on these as well. Maybe that's our problem. Maybe it's just thinking, hey, there's nothing changed. You don't need to. Maybe that's it. So maybe because libc is changing, it can't really detect that because this program is the same. So it didn't actually rebuild. That could be it. That could be it. That could be it. Oh, 
Oh, oh what? New keyboard. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Hey. <laughs> oh. We did it. We did it, chat. So it was the fact that when you change libc and then recompile a user space program, the user space program will use a cached version of itself if possible because it is not aware that libc has changed because that's an error during linking or a change during linking, not really in the program itself. So the compiler just says, we don't even need to link. Nothing's been changed. Fuck, man. Okay. That's, that's good to keep in mind. Good to keep in mind. Also, fucking pog. Do you understand how much we just skyrocketed Lenzer OS into the future? <laughs> I don't know if you understand how much Serade just helped us. Because now, for example, in standard out, look at, look at this program. Does this program look familiar to you? It looks familiar to me. I've seen it a million times. I've seen it in every tutorial on C that I've ever read, basically. They start with something like this, where you create a message and then you print it, right? Or you just print a message directly. But this works on Lenser OS. This program runs and actually prints out, hello friends, and then a new line. Look at that. And then it exits. It's done. No longer runs. How beautiful is this? This is amazing. This means that programs in Lenser OS are beginning to actually have functionality, right? Which is the one of the most important parts. The thing that we have to think about next is like, like literally directly next is somehow, basically, these processes have to be able to I wouldn't say talk to each other, but interact. So in the same way where like one of them can write to a file and another can read from it. That can already happen, which means that honestly, we're probably, we're already way further than we, than I think we are. But what we, what do we have to do next? We want a desktop environment, which means we need like a program that runs the desktop right? But we have to start writing that program. Serade says some kind of primitive terminal that can run programs, a shell. We need an init process, basically, I think. I would go for that first. Go for an init shell, then a GUI. Okay. So a shell is effectively, it would print things out, and it would also, okay, standard input would be a thing. So we would have to have a focused process. We need a TTY plus bash, Lamau. <laughs> yeah, just that, you know, simple. Okay, so what is a TTY? I'm not experienced with like low level Linux that much because I don't run it. I would love to be more experienced, but I'm not. A TTY is a text terminal. I know that, right? It's basically something that you, it's like a shell. So where does, does the TTY handle all of your input? Even if you're in a shell, like a shell is a user space program, right? Here's the confusing bit. This is a user space program. This one is even a GUI user space program, but don't worry about that. This is a user space program, the shell. So if it prints to standard out the shell stuff, that's fine. It doesn't need to be a GUI program. The TTY is basically the terminal. 
the init process calls get TTY to connect to a TTY. The init process is the shell. The TTY is the terminal. OK, uh, OK, I'm starting to understand you. So Vowelbus says, what theme is that for the terminal? I think Campbell, but I changed it a little bit. This is new shell, technically, by the way, if you're asking what shell I'm using. But I'm using Campbell, but altered. I changed it. If you really want, it's here. So the shell runs in the terminal. Ah, OK. OK. So, OK. <laughs> For lack of a better space to do this, I'm going to the scratch buffer. And what you're saying is that on Linux, we have a TTY. And then a TTY has, for example, a shell. But it can also have any amount of user space programs. Is this right? What is new shell didn't know it? Oh, OK. Sorry about that. I glossed over. New shell is spelled with new. It's actually this shell. So you can see it's new shell right here. For example, Windows also has PowerShell. Oh, I don't know if it's going to leak my IP. Uh, it shouldn't. This is PowerShell, as you can see. It's a different shell. Everything looks differently, acts differently, and has different ways to interact with the system. It's like if I did list uh, files here, or something like that. <laughs> OK, what if I just did ls? You can see uh, ls is actually just get child item. So that's what it is. So when you call get child item in PowerShell, this happens. Does that make sense? Whereas in new shell, when you type get child item, it should not work. See? So it's basically a shell is the command interpreter. New shell is basically just uh, a shell that I really like. And I have oh my posh set up with it. OK, so I said some very helpful stuff. Basically, when the user types something, the terminal pipes it to the shell, terminal to shell. Then the shell prints to standard out on the terminal. And then, OK, so here's my question. I don't really want this system, but and if the shell is running a program in the foreground, that program gets the gets the input. Yeah, that makes sense. So it goes user TTY shell program, yeah. So on Lenser OS, we just, I think we can skip the TTY nonsense, can we not? We may add it in later, but for now, does it really matter? <laughs> does TTY, I mean, we don't really want multiple standard outs and standard and stuff like that, right? Not right now, at least. You basically already have a TTY, just the default TTY. Yeah. So we'll just say it's implied TTY0 is here. You can type in it after all. See, the mistake you're making is that the typing is actually like handled in any sensible way. It's not. <laughs> you can check that out in keyboard.cpp. OK. Two PRs. Two PRs. One stream. So Lenser OS has a shell, right? But here's the thing. There's also going to be like other processes. Does this make sense? How do we deal with this situation? Like where does our, how do we determine where the input gets piped to? Do you know what I mean? 
So Raid says, just restrict that to one line, add a prompt, and you have a shell. You're correct, that's how a lot of people do it. To the shell, always. So how would that work with a GUI process? Right? So if we have a GUI process that's focused, it should take precedence over the shell, no? Does the shell somehow run every single GUI process and delegate the input to different places? Also, this shell, we're, we're calling it shell. It's basically like in it, right? System D, that type of stuff. In that case, the shell TTY pipes the input to the window manager. So we'd have Lenser OS. Is there a better name than shell? We could call it like Michel, but that'd be confusing. What if we called it like... I don't know what to call it. It'd be, it's like the IO handler, is what you're saying. Shell is the best name. So shell IO handler. Right? So the shell is just another process. But the shell, okay, handles all input output, handles all IO. Other processes may get fed I.O. Somehow? How, does, how do these other processes get fed I.O.? In this case, it's basically the init process, so you can call it that too. Okay, okay. We're calling it shell. Shell is good. We're, we're sticking with it. So how do other processes get fed I.O.? Or GUI processes? So when in the shell how do we know if it's a command so it says all right let's try this again i know i'm get I, i'm i'm talking in circles it's my bad there's three situations i like it what are the three situations the shell is focused and it's basically just in the shell your input goes into the shell so funds os still doing good still doing good Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it says, all right, four situations, Lamau. Zero, shell is running, and nothing is running in the foreground, nothing happens here. I mean, doesn't that mean we would input into the shell, like run a command? Question mark. One, a shell process is running in the foreground. That means the shell is unavailable so long as the process is running. All input gets fed directly to that process. That's normally what happens when you run a process. So that's like if we run Emacs, Right here, we can just open like README. It opens it, but then our terminal is just waiting for Emacs. And when we're done with the buffer, we can let Emacs can let the shell know and we can return to the shell. Exactly. Okay, so there's one. We're in a process, it gets fed to the foreground process. Totally makes sense to me. Zero and one, I'm following. <laughs> Two, a shell process is running in the background. That's what happens if you start a process with and. That process has no way of getting input from the shell. I've never used background processes. I feel embarrassed to admit that. I've never used background processes. What does that mean? You can, so how do I do that here? Can I start this Emacs client, like not here? I'm dumb. So you're telling me if I do and, do I do that? 
there's an and at the end. Okay. Okay. We're still waiting for Emacs. I did put and at the end. Do I need to be in bash or like Linux? Because it definitely didn't work. Yeah, look, we just opened and. Lamal. So that just opened another, use a proper shell. New shell is scuffed, use a proper shell. Lamal. I love how you just are so quick to be like, it's new shell sucks. <laughs> like Jesus, bud. What they say is it doesn't have built-in background task manager. <laughs> New shell does suck. No, I'm kidding. Uh, told ya. But it's not scuffed. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It just doesn't work how other shells work yet. So are you telling me it would work in PowerShell? I don't think it would work in PowerShell. Okay, it worked. <laughs> Fuck. But it didn't actually open. It doesn't even run it. It didn't, like, nothing happened. Sorry, it says, there you go. I mean, it didn't work, but we can pretend it did. Emacs didn't run or open the buffer. Please try this with a program that isn't Emacs. Any other program. Give me a program then. I don't know what program to run. What should I run? Like Notepad and Jesus. You suggest Notepad over Emacs? It worked. <laughs> Notepad sucks though. So what now? Why does this matter? We have jobs. I mean, we it, it happened in the background, so we returned right away. That's good. But we can still get input. So you've confused me. You said a shell process ran in the background has no way of getting input. No way of getting input from the shell. But if it's a GUI program... <laughs> am I wrong? Oh, I didn't realize I had tap dance on. So it said, oh my god, that's not a proper terminal. I mean, you can just keep calling, it's, it's a terminal emulator. Oh no. Are you just going to keep calling everything dumb or can we, can I learn something? You're at two, right? There should be, you have zero, one, and two. There should be one more. You said there's four. The raid. The MS Windows Windows Server is the real shell here. Okay, so what you're saying is, is this terminal is just acting. Also, how do I close these background jobs? Do you know? Rip. I'm gonna just close that and hope they close. I'm gonna stop reading chat. <laughs> I'm getting upset. You guys are just saying shit that doesn't matter. Like, nope, you're wrong. And what you're using, it's stupid. <laughs> like, well, somebody has to use something. I'm just trying to learn, okay? So in Lenser OS, if we had some shell program and all IO, all input, right? All input is piped to shell standard in. Shell reads standard in in a loop. When it gets uh, data, it handles it. What does that mean? 
What does handling mean? That means that if the shell is focused, the shell is the thing, uh, yeah, is focused. We'll go with is focused. Input should be handled internally as a command input. Unless it is enter, in which case, uh, shell reads standard in and loop when it gets data, it handles it. What does handling mean? That means that if the shell is focused, input should be handled internally as a command input, unless it is entered, in which case the current command should attempt, should be executed. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. First time chat. ASDF GHLOL1234. What a name. At Lenser, do you have any resource suggestions for learning systems programming? Like operating systems programming or just like low level programming in general? ASDFGH LOL 1234 says, Yeah, I just want to start with low level programming for fun. I'm working as a back end engineer. Well, my advice to you would be to pick a project and write it in a low level programming language. So if you want to make a text editor, make a text editor in C or C. If you want to make a, I don't know, a calculator, make it in C or C. If you want to make anything, just make it in a low-level language or a systems language, and then you'll become a systems programmer after you've made that thing. And the only way to not succeed at that is if you give up before you've made the thing, which uh, is mostly a stubbornness thing, because it will be hard and it will be frustrating, but you push through it. I am going to have to go somewhat soon, probably like 20, 30 minutes. But yeah, if you want to just start with low level programming for fun, just make something. Even if you, and if you don't know what to make, uh, make something that you don't want to make. <laughs> just make anything. Go, I don't know what I want to make. Then pick a, like, okay, I'm going to write an OpenGL program and write to the screen, or I'm going to write a text editor, or I'm going to write a GUI program that runs on all three platforms, like all the three major ones, Mac, Windows, and Linux. You just got to choose some design goals and then meet them in a systems language it would be my recommendation. If all input is piped to shell standard in, shell reads standard in a loop when it gets data it handles it which means that the shell is focused input should be handled internally unless it is enter in which case current command should be executed okay so then we can have if the shell is not focused if the then we basically, what does focused mean here? So how would we change focus? So in the shell itself, so then, okay. Uh, if the uh, shell has a foreground process. Send input to the foreground process. That somewhat makes sense. Mm. 
what does sending input mean? How can a user space shell process send input to another user space process? I guess we have to write to the standard in. No? So if we write to standard in of another process, from another process, then I guess we just write. But if the other process is in the middle of a read, I mean, it can't be because of our big file lock, a recursive mutex. So effectively, we should just be able to write to the standard in, and it'll either wait for the program to finish reading what it is currently, or it will take the lock and say, okay, I'm writing to this. And then once it's done writing the input, then the user space program can read it. Terrific Table says, I think I just spent an hour making a function way too abstract. Well, at least I can use it in different projects now. Lamal. <laughs> so how should the standard in of other user space processes be able to be accessed? The only data we will have is PID most likely, which is process ID. Okay. So the shell we are going to run. And then the shell is going to eat all of our input from the kernel's perspective. The kernel is basically just going to directly write to the shell standard end as far as it's concerned. But the shell then has to be kind of like the kernel and write directly into other process standard in. Huh. Huh, indeed. Terrific table 55, what function did you make way to abstract? What was going on there? So if the shell so the only way it has most likely so the shell would have to use a PID to write to this thing. That actually seems doable. We could either have like certain pathways. So we could have like the path. We could have specific ads based on PID to access standard IO files. This is exactly like Unix. So we would have something like, I don't know, slash IO slash PID here slash standard in and then we would write to this and the VFS would treat that as like oh this isn't actually writing to the file system this is access this is actually a pipe hmm and so we could have specific paths based on PID to access standard IO files. This is exactly like Unix. We would have bleh. 
refer to the process with kids standard input. We could then ensure somehow that the proper process is writing. Okay, so we'd have specific paths based on paid access. We then ensure somehow that the proper process is writing. It is the proper process shell slash init. So we ensure that the shell is writing or something like that. Uh, maybe have some way or permissions to be set on these files specifically. Ooh, file permissions, scary. Okay. So we could have specific paths. We could also have syscalls, which directly write to standard in of other processes. Basically, the exact same as the write syscall. We could also have syscalls which directly write to standard in of other processes. Basically the exact same as the write syscall, but handled, but the special behavior is handled at syscall level versus in the VFS itself. So, you could only ever write to another process's standard in. Reading another process's standard in seems like a whole mess that I don't really want to get into. So, effectively, we can all generally write to standard in of other processes, basically the exact same as write syscall. Because it's the same as the write syscall, I'm very tempted to just handle it in the VFS, like Unix. I don't really think that would be an issue. Namin? Because if we had something like this path able to refer to that, then we could just basically read and write to and from it. And then to, we could effectively we could say just if it starts with IO, also we could just call this anything. This could be like processes because we could store other stuff here. It doesn't really matter. For now it's IO. We'll call it, we could call it proc data, process, maybe process. Mm -hmm. So with process, PID here stood in, refer to the process with PID standard input. We can then ensure somehow that the proper process is writing. What is the proper process? Shell init. Maybe have some way for permissions to be set on these files specifically. They're really not even files because they're not stored on a file system. They're just going to be in the, a file in the term of the virtual file system in that it can read and write to it. Or at least error when reading from it and write to it if permissions are correct. So basically, kernel starts shell. Kernel sends all input to shell standard input. Shell constantly checks for input. Uh -huh when it shows 
when input is available, it is handled as soon as possible. So that would be like an while f gets or something like that. While f gets c, right? So while we're getting characters, then handle it. And to handle it, we would basically write shell handles input by writing to the focused PID to the process with a PID of focused PID. Focus PID defaults to the shell, defaults to shell, is updated to the pro to the foreground process present and may eventually refer to the window server given any GUI process is focused. Okay. So Raid is talking about fork, and that's a headache. Fork isn't too bad. It's not easy, but it's not too bad. You basically just copy the page table and then alter what's within it. Okay, so we have a shell which handles all IO. That's bothering me. We have a shell which handles all IO. We have other processes that may get fed IO somehow. And then we have GUI processes, which when they're focused, need to be sent standard in standard IO in a very peculiar way. There's a lot of steps to GUI programs, which is why in GUI programs, it's all event handling rather than calling F gets or anything. Okay. All input is piped to shell from the kernel. Okay, let's start here. Basically kernel starts shell. So currently, you see we start these two processes. One of them prints hello friends. The other just exits with 420, which is pretty hilarious. And they don't do much. But the idea is that the shell wouldn't really ever exit. And if it does, we're going to have to have some very specific things happen. So the kernel is going to start the shell. Shell will, in a loop, constantly check for input. So if there's no input, it will just ideally sleep or something like that so that the scheduler skips it until next time around. Something like a yield. When input is available, it is handled as soon as possible. That basically just means that in the while loop, once we get the input, we'll delegate it, we'll do something. So the shell handles the input by writing to the process with a PID of focus to the standard in of a process with a PID of focused PID. Focused PID defaults to shell, is updated to a foreground process if present, and may eventually refer to the window server given any GUI process is focused. And then the window server will effectively delegate to the proper GUI process that is actually focused because the window server will know, hey, the user uh, has this window focused, it should be on top, we draw it on top, etc. I'm pretty sure if init ever exits, you get a kernel panic on Linux. Uh, yeah, exactly. Specific handling. We could also just try and restart it uh, or just restart the whole system. Not a bad idea. Okay, this doesn't seem too insane. <sighs> I have to go to the bathroom so bad, dog. So from our kernel, we have keyboard.cpp. 
right? And we have a PS2 keyboard handler, which means that it's just an interrupt. Uh, what is it? Keyboard, okay. So as you can see currently, this is what we do when we receive, okay, that's not right. UART COM1 handler, keyboard handler, there it is. Hard to find these days, hard to find. Okay, so this keyboard handler, IRQ1, the PS2 keyboard, to do, write to standard in a focus process. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> when I wrote that, I was going, yeah, just write to the, to the standard in. And then I was like, wait, that won't work. Because <laughs> uh, why would the kernel know what the focused process is? What is focused process? It's not the one currently running. It's like, okay, that... I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense, so not necessarily. I don't know. But as you can see, we basically handle the scan code of reading from the bus, right? We read from the bus at the address OX60, the port is technically what it's called. At port OX60, we read a byte, and that's meant to be our input. That is our actual keyboard scan code. Ta -da -da -da. This keyboard scan code, as you can see, calls gtext.handle scan code. So if we look at handle, here it's in keyboard scan code translation. It is not, I lied. Keyboard gtext. It's probably in basic text renderer, but that's here. So maybe it's in basic renderer. I don't even know where it is at this point. Maybe it's in the uh, the H file. That's probably what it is. Here we go. So when we handle a scan code, you can see that we parse the scan code and then we draw the cursor. So parse scan code is implemented in keyboard.cpp. And you can see, whoops, you can see that effectively we say, okay, if we got E0, by the way, arrow keys are implemented as two bytes, which is why we have to do this state machine crap. Don't you just love it? Uh, but basically we switch on the code and we say, okay, if it's left shift, then it's a modifier. If it's right shift, then it's a modifier. If it's left shift plus OX80, that's actually the release of left shift. So we know that uh, we can set it to false, same with right shift caps lock, etc. cetera. Uh, we have enter and backspace handled specifically because uh, basically because this is meant to act as a basic text renderer parsing of a scan code. So when you render a new line, you don't just send the new line code. You know what I mean? You actually have to run the code that moves the drawing cursor down into the left. So here's our current handling, right? Otherwise, by the way, if it's not any of these modifiers or special keys, we just say, okay, handle it using QWERTY translate, which uses this scan code translation. And this basically just converts scan codes into, uh, you know, actual data characters. Does that make sense? So this is a QWERTY scan code translation, a very simple one, but it does work. And uh, you can see we basically just return zero unless it's proper. Anyways, then we call handle character after we translate it. And handle character should be right up above. Nope, classic. No classic. Here it is. It says parse character, right? And parse character then says, okay, if it's a backspace, which again, shouldn't happen, but because of this here. But if it doesn't happen there, then it can happen here. Same with the, the CR. We can act as a, a new line. I'm pretty sure that should be line feed. I'm pretty sure. Who knows? Or is slash r oxd? I can never remember. I think that's slash r. 
If it's non-printable, don't try. But if it's printable, then just use putc, which basically just calls our renderer to put a character out of position from the font. How about that? Instead of doing all this and writing to the screen, what would we like to do with our scan code? We would like to still translate our scan code. And we would like to still handle left shift, right shift, alt, stuff like that separately here versus uh, in other places. Not necessarily here in the basic text renderer, but here when we parse the scan code. Or we could just send the scan code to the shell. The hardware scan code that we got sent, we could just send that to the shell. That's probably a better idea. Then the shell in user space can handle all the user input translation if there needs to be any, which there does, but I think that's the way to go. Oh, I have to go. It is my time. It is my time. Alrighty, thank you all so much for watching. I, uh, I've got nothing left for you. I will leave just by doing one of these. Playing you a little Muzak. If you didn't see the very start of the stream, the first few seconds, I recommend checking out the VOD after it goes up. It's, uh, it's worth it. I laughed hard. Hey! Lenser OS. It now has a user space, libc, thanks to Suraid a very helpful community member that I appreciate a lot around here. And we're just getting to the point where we are maturing so much in terms of Lenser OS's usability. Right now, it's kind of, as you can see, just a little toy OS. It doesn't do much. You can draw, you can type, but it's not like it's that interesting, right? I mean, it is if you're interested in low-level stuff, but just from a computer user's perspective, if you called this an OS, they'd be like, this is a paint program. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean that this is an OS. So from a user's perspective, it's becoming so much better because uh, thanks in great part to Serade, because I wouldn't just be doing this stuff. I don't understand a lot of it, right? I built the initial, <laughs> I built the foundation. That doesn't mean I understand with like, how to put the electric the electrical system in, right? I just built the building foundation. I don't know what is up when it comes to electricity. I don't know what is up when it comes to plumbing. I don't know what's up when it comes to even like layout of each floor of the building. All I did was build the foundation, <laughs> right? And uh, it's really cool to see the building after I've built the foundation be built and the electrical system start to be functional and work and you're like oh i can plug stuff in now and oh i can do this effectively we can run processes and call puts and regular libc functions and have them function properly also you can see how the scheduler doesn't always run them in the same order you can see that this time we actually ran standard out and then we ran blaze it process one how about that how about that? and that's due to interrupts in the scheduler working in a specific way. But yeah, I just, I'd like to thank all of you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the VOD after it goes up. The very beginning is just, it's too funny. And uh, check out the YouTube for any previous broadcasts, any VODs of those. There's a lot of them and many hours for you to sink your teeth into. There is also the GitHub and Codeberg links where you can find all of this code free and open source on the internet. How about that? It is completely free and open source for you to mess with, as long as you follow the license, which is a common license, GPLv3 for Lenser OS, for Lite, which we worked on earlier, it's the MIT licensed. How about that? How about that? And uh, yeah, fork them, mess with them, make pull requests, do cool things. I would love to see it happen. And uh, yeah, thanks for sticking with me through this. And uh, we'll be back here again very soon.
I am happy that my, uh, my new keyboard as well, I'm happy that it didn't slow me down too bad. I didn't feel like I was slowed down because of the keyboard ever, which is good. I did feel like it got in the way once or twice when I forgot how to press a button or, but I never had to like look up my key maps or anything. So that's good. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time on this beautiful, beautiful platform. And uh, that's going to be all for now. I will, I'll see you. I'm going to say my little, oh, wrong way. Here it goes. Are you ready? Goodbye. Ooh. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.